Sports presents from sunny, warm Orlando, the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, featuring Tennessee out of the Southeast Conference at 9-2, and two, and the co-champs of the Big Ten, the Northwestern Wildcats. A capacity crowd of over 66,000 on hand to witness the Wildcats. A crew from Evanston, Illinois, led by Pat Fitzgerald, the human roadblock, who sets the boundary. He marks his territory and dares others to cross the line. And Peyton Manning, he knows no boundaries. He's living out his football fantasies with every toss, dreaming of his next assault on the defense. with a couple of prominent juniors, one of them this man, Peyton Manning. Could this be his last collegiate game? And for Northwestern, Darnell Autry. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Could this be his last game? And a major story developing as we speak. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Well, Mark, we've just learned that Darnell Autry will not start in today's game. He may not even play in this game. Autry is one of 15 Northwestern players stung by the flu bug two days ago. Coach Gary Barnett, visibly upset just seconds ago, told me that he believes Autry's so weak, he doesn't even think Autry will play in this game. And, guys, obviously, that would be a big blow to Northwestern. John Spagnola, a major story just breaking moments ago. How does this affect Darnell Autry? Well, you know, it's hot and humid to begin with today, so you have to worry about dehydration, Mark, with the entire football team. Now you got somebody who's sick with a fever. That means he's dehydrated to begin with. You know, it could pose a serious health risk to Darnell Autry if he played today, and it could hurt his football team. Autry, a major cog in Northwestern season, all season long, back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. How does it affect their offensive game plan? Well, you know, really, it doesn't affect their offense one bit. They run the football. They like zone running plays. They're going to use Adrian Autry. No relation to Darnell in the football game today. He had one start this year, and he gained 128 yards. He was Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Doesn't change one thing they do. They're going after a beat-up defensive line for Tennessee. Time for the understudy to shine. That's him, Adrian Autry. They face adversity all year long. We'll see how they answer it today. It's not. It's Doug McLeod. Is it number two or number 10? 13. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Cop USA Florida Citrus Bowl. We are about to set the kickoff. Northwestern lost the toss and will be kicking off to Tennessee, who will receive. And Tennessee electing to receive that kickoff. But look at the temperature. It has been unseasonably warm for the last week. Humidity, 60 degrees. Yeah, we've been down here for a couple days, Mark, and it has been very hot and humid today. Certainly the most humid day that we felt this week, and that adds to the Darnell Autry story. I look at Gary Barnett, the fifth-year head coach of Northwestern. He has become the standard by which coaches who are rebuilding their programs are measured by. A look at his magic in five seasons at Evanston, Illinois. Back-to-back -back Big Ten Coach of the Year. His counterpart on the other side of the field, Philip Fulmer, Another 9-2 and two season in the books. They've won 42 of his 51 games during his tenure. He is understated and low-key, almost to a fault, some of his critics say. Goins kicking on. Mark Levine at the 4. And he's brought down at the 14-yard line. And that is where Peyton Manning and the Tennessee offense will start things off. Manning, the first Tennessee quarterback to pass for over 3,000 yards in a single season. He's tall, and he's lanky, and he sees the field extremely well, John. Yeah, he certainly does, and he's got about the best technique of a college quarterback that I have ever seen. Of course, his father is Archie Manning, and 
from a very young age, this man learned to play football, learned to play quarterback, and aspired to be a major college quarterback. First and 10 for Tennessee from the 15-yard line. Jay Graham, the single back. Four wide receivers out on the set. Little waggle action. Manning on the money on first and 10. Complete for the first down out to the 28-yard line. A 13-yard pickup to Peerless Price, number 37, tackled by Josh Barnes. A look at the backs and receivers. Number 11, his name prominent today. Joey Kent, top-notch receiver. A look at the offensive line. They underwent a lot of changes up front, John. They sure did. Trey Teague was the starting left tackle. He's now the starting center. Robert Poole, who's at left tackle, you see him there, did begin the season at right guard. They've been banged up and moved some people around. They think they have this unit down now. And into pass, his intended receiver falls down at the 39-yard line. And it's incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Let's take a look at this Northwestern Wildcat defense. The strength of the defensive unit is their front seven. There's a look at the first four and they're a four three set Matt Rice is a guy who plays on the center Pat Fitzgerald of course defensive player year in the Big Ten two times running a secondary mark this secondary is going to be tested today Gerald Conaway number 11 there's getting his first start at corner he's a redshirt freshman and Tennessee is going to be going after him early in this game Northwestern coming on the blitz Manning eluding the pressure Decides to take it himself, and Manning is tackled at the 34-yard line, about four yards short of the first down by Tim Sharp, the six-foot-one-inch, 243-pound senior, their drop linebacker. Sharp is a guy who has benefited from the tutelage of Pat Fitzgerald, number 51. The two of them are roommates, in fact, on this trip at the Florida Citrus Bowl. I think you can see the offensive game plan unfolding early for Tennessee. They want to take advantage of what they think is a thin secondary for the Wildcats and throw the football early and often in this football game. You can see three pass attempts so far. Of course, Manning ran on that place with a running play. They want to try and wear out this Wildcat defense. Got to get to the 37-yard line for the first down. Third and three out of the backfield with the flat complete to Graham. He's got room to burn and speed to burn. Knocked out of bounds finally at the 41 yard line by Josh Barnes a pickup of 23 on the play and they are moving the ball early right what Pat Fitzgerald number 51 he's going to come right through on a blitz untouched Manny gets rid of the football two guys that we saw in our opening today two guys who spent a lot of time together this week are finally uh, you know going beyond the bounds of friendship now and getting after one another a little bit but look at how Manning hung in there and I think he throws the short ball extremely well here James Graham on the run, he was able to turn the ball upfield and make some real good yards out of that play. Yeah, real good pace on that pass. Just underway here in the first quarter. Manning two of three so far for 35 yards. Audibling at the line. A four wide receiver set again. He's got a man in the seam on the post. Touchdown, Volunteers. He's peerless. Price, 43 yards, 6 nothing balls. And he was going against... Gerald Conaway, the redshirt freshman, who's getting his first start. Hudefa Ismaili is out. He was suspended for breaking team rules of marijuana use, actually. And Peerless Price goes past his substitute, Gerald Conway, on just a go route. Peerless Price, with all the great speed, he leads this team in yards per reception, averaging 19 yards per catch. He certainly added to it there. That's a pretty healthy total. Jeff Hall now in for the extra point. Tennessee striking early with less than two minutes gone here in the first quarter. The extra point is good. Guys from Tennessee jumping out to a 7-0 lead early in Orlando. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Orlando where Tennessee is ahead 7-0 over Northwestern. The opening drive they score, but Dean Blevins from the sidelines with a later development than we heard earlier. Darnell Autry expected to not start, perhaps not play. He will start the ball game, guys. So, you know, adrenaline does wonderful things sometimes. We'll see how long he can go, but it's been a flip-flop in the last 10 minutes. If you just joined us, thanks a lot, Dean. Autry woke up this morning, his temperature soaring up to 102 degrees. That's what you call a fever. Things complicated further by the flu. That's Jeff Hall getting set to kick off. 
that deep, Josh Barnes, number 17, along with number 86, David Beasley. The Volunteers lead seven to nothing. Beasley at the three. Tripped up and brought down at the 18-yard line. One more look at that last touchdown. Conaway burned on the play. Well, one thing Tennessee wants to do is spread out their offense. You see how this whole defense is completely spread out for Northwestern. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Peerless Price now working on the redshirt freshman, number 11 at the bottom there. Gerald Conaway just beats him. He misses his bump on the bump and run coverage. And, of course, Peerless Price goes right by him for the touchdown. So Tennessee doing exactly what they want to do. They want the Wildcats to run all over the field today early in the game. Conaway starting because... Hudefa Ismaili was suspended because of drug use. Autry is starting the ball game. So this story changing by the moment. First he wasn't starting, now he is. That within the last five or ten minutes. And Autry gets the test early, and they swarm him back at the 14-yard line. They'll lose about four yards on the play. Craig King leading the convoy of Tennessee tacklers. There's a look at the starting quarterback, Steve Schnurr, completing 61% of his passes this year. He led the Big Ten in pass efficiency. Yeah, he really upped his numbers this year by about 700 yards in passing. Gary Barnett said he's been the difference in our football team this year. He's improved that much from his junior to his senior year. Second down and 14, McGrew and Autry in the backfield, and now McGrew lines up in the slot. Quick three-step drop, complete to the near side. That's Dwayne Bates out to the 28-yard line, a talented sophomore from Aiken, South Carolina. Bates, number five, in the middle of your screen. Autry, number 24. Toussaint Waterman, also good size, a physical receiver. This is a big offensive line. They outweigh Tennessee by 43 pounds up front. Justin Shabit, all Big Ten at the right guard position. And what they really want to do is take advantage of the fact that Tennessee is beat up up front. As a matter of fact, they had two starters on offense, Chester Ford and Dustin Moore. They're tight end, practicing in a backup capacity for that defensive line at Tennessee. They're going to try and wear down that defensive line. Could be a battle of attrition today. Brown, McGrew, and Autry in the backfield on third and two. Schnurr passing complete, but it is right at the first down marker. It's going to be close. Lavelle Brown making the catch. Terry Fair, number 13, making the tackle for Tennessee. Yep. And a look at the defense. Part of the front seven for Tennessee. Coleman, Duff, Buxton, and Brown up front. A lot of changes, as we just talked about. Hines, the leading tackler with 110 this year. And in the secondary, Terry Fair is one of the top corners in the nation. Boy, he sure is. And he'll be matched up against Dwayne Bates today, which is one of those... Matchups you look forward to during the course of a ball game. Let's see if LaBelle Brown was stretched far enough to get the first down. He did it, Mark. It's real short, just short. And Schnurr pleading <laughs> with the coaching staff. Yeah, they're they're gonna go for it. They are thinking about wow. Boy, with 11:36 to play, Gary Barnett. I think he's trying to. Boy, this, I mean. In negative territory like this, if this doesn't work out, especially keeping in mind what happened on first down, how that Tennessee defense penetrated it, you know, that could give Tennessee an awful advantage in field position early in this game. They might try to draw them offside, but then they'd lose five yards on a delay of game. Not quite sure about the wisdom of this decision. Gary Barnett and his crew have been bedfellows with adversity and huge challenges all year long. Well, they can come back from getting behind, that's for sure. <laughs> They've done it all year. Drexler, Stewart, and Autry. And now the two tights line up on the line. Autry the single back. And Schnurr keeps it himself for the first down. So Northwestern rolls the dice early and passes its first crucial test. Getting the first down with 11.20 to play in the first quarter. And, and you know what Barnett's saying to his offensive line? This game is in your hands, fellas. I trust you here on the 29-yard line. I'm going to trust you throughout the rest of the game. A vote of confidence for the Big Five up front. Sure. Nathan Strick, where does the center? Number 63 gets a good push up front. That's called wedge blocking. That's when those guards come down, go hip to hip with the center, and Schnurr works right behind him for the first down. A lot of seniors on that Northwestern offensive line, 18 in all on the team, making their last appearance in purple uniform. Darnell Autry stacked up at the 31-yard line by Craig King 
and Bill Duff. These two teams trying to work off a little bit of rust. Northwestern hasn't played since November the 16th against Purdue. Tennessee, meanwhile, hasn't played in about four and a half weeks. Their last game, a struggle against Vanderbilt. And both teams actually struggled in their last game. And, uh, you know, certainly the Northwestern coaches feel it's an advantage for Tennessee to only have to go a month without playing, whereas they're going six weeks. And uh, Greg Meyer, the offensive coordinator for Northwestern, made a good point. He said both games are more often lost than won. Musso in motion to the top of your screen. Second and nine, Schnur. Batted at the line. And intercepted. That thing bounced off of three players. And number 97, Buck Buxton, coming up with the loose ball. Kind of turned around and said, look what I found. Yeah, that was as close to a pinball machine as you'll ever see a football get on a football field. Schnur tried to throw it over the middle. It was tipped initially. Ball was tipped initially. Now, Schnur's not a very tall guy. It didn't affect this pass as Wilson jumped up in the air, knocked it away, and then it bounced off two Northwestern players, the last one being the tight end, Darren Drexler, 83. Buck Buxton is there, so Tennessee gets the field position after the turnover. First turnover of the afternoon. Manning, under the snap, flags down at the 36-yard line. Lots of movement up front. We have an all-Western Athletic Conference crew. Number 68 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Our referee with the white hat, Bill McCabe, leading that yeah, WAC crew today. From the WAC crew, they don't call the numbers. So they do that in the WAC conference. They didn't do it here today. Well, tonight, ABC's New Year's Day concludes with your Wednesday comedy favorites. Grace Under Fire, The Drew Carey Show, Ellen, plus a special coach. For our viewers on the West Coast, it starts right after the Rose Bowl on many of these stations at 8 p.m. Pacific time, all tonight on ABC. ABC. Don't forget, coming up next, the Rose Bowl National championship implications, Arizona State against Ohio State. And then tomorrow, the Nokia Sugar Bowl from New Orleans at 8 Eastern time, Florida against Florida State, part two. This is Jay Graham plowing his way up the middle of the turf down to the 34-yard line, gaining about five yards where Tim Sharp made the tackle, the 6'1 senior. Approaching 10 minutes to play in the first quarter. Tennessee leading 7 to nothing. It'll be second down from Northwestern's 35-yard line. And there's a look at one of the better motivators and his counterpart on the other side of the field, Philip Woolmer, in his fifth season for Tennessee. Second down and nine. Come back on the screen to the weak side of the field. Lane. Had a convoy of blockers and rolls down to the 16-yard line. Eric Lane picking up 17 yards on the play. Tennessee 9-2 on the season. You look at that 35-29 loss to Florida. That one was plausible, John Spagnola, but that loss at Memphis was a huge shocker for them. Uh, that was the worst defeat many believe in the history of the school when they lost that football game to Memphis. Of course, it knocked them out of the at-large Alliance Bowl bid and hurt their chances to play perhaps for a national championship. So that, that second loss really hurt them. And of course, Florida's the hump game for this program right now. It used to be Alabama, and now it's Florida. They have to find a way to beat the Gators. Manning with some impressive stats so far, looking to add to that total, firing incomplete to the man that caught the first touchdown pass, Peerless Price. Manning, 6'5", 215 pounds, and a look at his numbers, sparkling. Back-to-back -back seasons, completing 64% of his passes. Pretty consistent, wouldn't you say, from year to year? 64%, just under 3,000 last year, over 3,000. Of course, the first player to do that at Tennessee. A little higher touchdown to interception ratio this year, though. He's thrown 12 interceptions. First quarterback in Tennessee school history to throw for over 3,000 yards. Nine minutes to play in the opening frame. Manning on the slant complete. Down to the 10-yard line to Eric Lane once again, his second reception of the game. Tackled by Barry Gardner, the backup Hawk linebacker for Northwestern. It'll be third down and short. You know, when you start spreading out a defense, then you can get your back out underneath. You'll see Eric Lane here.
come out. See number five, he's working underneath on an angle route on number 52, Tim Sharp. When you start spreading a defense out, throwing deep, then these kind of passes become a lot more available to your offense. Third and about one and a half to go, John. They're calling it two. They run it. And Manny keeps it himself. He sold that fake so well, everyone bought it. Terrific ball handling by Manning. Manning with an education in prestidigitation. Man, that was trickery, John. Uh, sure was. You see Phil Fulmer with that sly smile on his face <laughs> as he winked at one of his assistants. Nobody expects Peyton Manning to run the football. Certainly the Wildcat defense did it. Everybody's pursuing. Look, they haven't even turned their heads around yet to see where Manning was. And he just waltzes into the end zone. And it looks like Tennessee's going to be up 14 0. Manning capping that five play, 36 yard scoring drive, converting on that interception. Peyton Manning. Folks, the best seat in the house today is inside the Bud One airship flying overhead to bring us these beautiful shots of Orlando, Florida. There's a look at it. Nice pictures, guys. Tilt that thing down if you hear us. <laughs> a panoramic view You're of the You're going to scare a lot of people in the stadium <laughs> and they start tilting that nose down. Now look at Peyton Manning, who arrived on campus in 1994, six weeks early to get acclimated, and he surprised everybody with his work ethic uh, since. Watch more videotape. Than Bob Saget in the video room every single day. Jeff Hall kicking off. Drexler, five yards deep, will take a knee. Beasley takes the knee. And one more look at that touchdown run by Manning. Uh, just on the right side here is Casey Dale. He's a defensive end. He's a pass rushing specialist. He comes up field and he's thinking run all the way. Everybody else is hold it there. Do you see one head turned the opposite way? Not a single player yet is looking this way to see where the football is. And of course Peyton Manning has it and he scores his fourth touchdown of the year rushing. Now he has negative 131 yards rushing this year. But that's because of all the sacks that are charged against rushing not passing. Certainly a great call, though, by David Cutcliffe. Cutcliffe uh, refusing a few offers to coach other places. Staying at Tennessee, Bates complete on the quick pro pass down to the 27-yard line, tackled by Terry Fair. Schnur was intercepted on their last offensive series, and there's a look at Fair in the secondary from Phoenix, Arizona. Started as a true freshman and is tied for the team lead with four interceptions. Had two of them against Alabama. But this is an experienced team for Northwestern. They've been in games behind where they've been behind by 16 points to Michigan in the fourth quarter. Came back to win that one 17-16. So they know how to play together. It's a real senior group, a real veteran group, and they believe in one another. Second down and two for the Wildcats. Tennessee blitz and Schnur puts it on the ground and picks it up. And they will lose on the play. Looking a little ragged early, John Spagnuolo. Well, you know, one thing, Tyrone Hines moved up into the gap. So did Craig King, the linebackers, and they're faking blitzes right now. And I see Steve Schnur just pulled out a little bit early, and that football went on the ground. So that disrupts a good situation. We have second and short. Watch how the linebackers are walking up into those gaps. Number 44 on the left side, King. And Schnur pulls away from center, so he loses a couple yards on the play, and they have to try and convert this third down. Third down and six. They've got to make it to the 30 or beyond for the first down. Darnell Autry in the backfield, still in the game. Flag down of the play. The inside shuffle pass, and McGrew is dragged down at the 24. The play may have been whistled before it was snapped. Our official once again, our referee today, Bill McCabe. Part of the snap, slow start. Number 72 on the offense, five yard penalty. <laughs> now they're Still naming guys. Yeah. <laughs> they, they put the finger on Kevin Peterson. He did. <laughs> now they have to decide if this is a Big Ten SEC game or a WAC game. <laughs> but maybe they'll go every other call. Bill McCade 
Fingers the culprit right there. Third down and 11. Third and 11 for Northwestern. Those are the ball resting on the 19-yard line. Well, I think right now, Northwestern looking like they're shaking off some rust. You know, we talked about not playing for six weeks. They have to get down here Christmas Day. They practiced up in Evanston. They took five days off, came down here on Christmas Day, and worked in this heat. But right now, they look like a disorganized unit. I know Gary Barnett is very upset with the team has played so far. They've run eight plays on offense and only have 15 yards. Been some shakeups in their coaching staff of late too, John. Third down and 11 for Northwestern. Motion up front, but no flags yet. Schnur into traffic, incomplete to Brian Musso. He would have had a first down had he hung on. And Schnur put it right there for him. Brian Musso, the son of Johnny Musso, former running back for Alabama. Well, this guy's a big playmaker. I mean, he had three fourth down receptions versus Michigan, Wisconsin, and Illinois this year. They all set up winning touchdowns. He makes big plays for this team, but there he dropped the football, and he would have had enough yardage for the first down. Very uncharacteristic of Brian Musso. Number 14 is Paul Burton. The first team All-Big Ten in 1994 would have led the conference in punting this year had he qualified with enough kicks. Standing on his own seven. Throws it back to the 29. This is Terry Fair. Well, that looked like a clip there. I'm surprised Tennessee got away with one there. A 52-yard punt, John. Five on the return by Fair. And don't forget, coming up after our game, it's the Rose Bowl. 14-0 right here. Here we go, offense. Look at the Epcot Center. The background wide view of Orlando Florida where the weather has been outstanding there's just a few people warm. down here at Disney World this week aren't they yeah. <laughs> during the holiday had a good time over at the ESPN club at Disney World on the boardwalk a couple days ago did some stuff with the players Ford and Graham lining up out of the eye balls on the ground Big day tomorrow on ABC College Football. National Championship on the line. And for more, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. All right, Gene Stallings in his last game at the helm in Alabama. Maintenance off the play, play fake. Overthrows his intended receiver. And a late flag thrown back at the 45. Marcus Nash was being covered by Josh Barnes. And Barnes might have gotten some uniform there. May have grabbed him. Yeah, he did. It looks like uh, Barnes reached out with his right hand and just grabbed a hold of the intended receiver. But, I, you know, I don't know if that ball was catchable. That ball was overthrown by quite a distance. Boy, Gary Barnett has to be shaking his head. His team coming out and uh, maybe hitting the snooze bar. They trail 14-0 early with 5.22 to play in the first quarter. Ten yards, penalty from the previous spot. First down. They move the ball and spot it at the 43-yard line. Right here, you can see on the right side. Now watch, Josh Barnes is going to reach out with his right hand. See right there, just that little tug on the jersey. Is what was called Marcus Nash. I don't believe we caught that football. I don't believe that slowed him down at all, but a hold is a hold, especially when it's out there in the middle of the field. That's out of the eye on first and 10 now. And in out of at the line, he gets them into great plays, and he gets them into another one here. Complete at the 48 to Andy McCullough, to Andy McCullough the 6'3", 201-pound junior from Dayton, Ohio. And like Peerless Price, he's one of those Ohio receivers with a lot of speed, a lot of talent. And he's one of those tall receivers that always seem to come through Tennessee. Alvin Harper, Carl Pickens, Tim McGee, Corey Fleming over the years. Now you have Marcus Nash, Joey Kent. They're all over six feet. They can all run. They have great body control. Tennessee is just a great university to go to if you want to play wide receiver. And in six of eight. 
Make that seven of nine. Thank you very much. Out of the backfield, down to the 41-yard line. Jay Graham tackled by Josh Barnes. A pickup of 10 yards and another big orange first down. They lead 14-0 with 5.05 to play in the first period. A look at some other scores from bowl action. Rick Neuheisel's crew got it going against Washington coming back in that game. Yeah, Coy Detmer finally wins a game. I guess his brother Ty had been 0 for the Holiday Bowl, so they're happy about that. Stanford all over Michigan State. Army almost came back against Auburn. That was a pretty good game. A great year for the service academies. Sure was. And Nebraska beating up on Virginia Tech. Peyton Manning, 7 of 9, 119 yards, and a touchdown. Late hit on the offense, and Philip Fulmer Ooh. is giving it to Robert Poole. The hair on the back of his neck coming up. He sure is. He pulled him out of the game just to make his point as clear as possible. I think Poole understands. Fulmer very understating. Somewhat soft-spoken, but certainly not that time. Look at the penalty situation today. Both teams with two infractions. So they push the ball back to the 44-yard line. Ford and Graham lining up out of the eye on first and ten. Manning has been near flawless today. See, Northwest is getting Manning to check into an audible by showing one thing. Now they check on defense and do something else. And they just get the playoff and a nice play. Jay Graham plowing his way for the first down. Putting the hat on Eric Collier, the safety, picking up 12 yards. Tough running by Graham. Hey, Jay Graham had 154 yards in this game last year against Ohio State. He's been frustrated this year. Has not gained the kind of yards he was used to. Some of it's his fault. But just a real good cut. A great lead block up front by his fullback, Chester Ford, number 20. And Graham slashing outside. He's got real good speed. But this year has been frustrating for him because of all that changes in the offensive line. Graham was the MVP of the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl a year ago. Here's the play fake. Peyton going downtown. Oh Incomplete for Peerless Price. John, almost similar to the play they scored on the first time. Absolutely. I don't even know if Gerald Conaway was in the right zip code on that play. I mean, he covered him, and it looked like he expected some help deep from the safety. The help never came. And had that ball not been overthrown, it would have been another touchdown for Tennessee. What a few gaps by Manning today. Manning, of course, the son of Archie, who was a quarterback with New Orleans in the NFL for 14 years in all. And before that, Archie had an outstanding career at Ole Miss. A lot of tradition, football tradition in that family. Backs out of the eye, second and ten. Graham picks up a couple. Downstairs to Dean for more on Manning. Well, Mark, you mentioned Archie Manning. What a fabulous player that he was. And if there was ever a player destined to be a star quarterback, it was Peyton Manning. You know, Peyton used to listen to audio tapes of his father's college games at Mississippi. Archie had a friend who got the radio broadcast of the games and gave them, all, gave them all to him. And Peyton would lay in bed at night and listen to all the games over and over and over. And he memorized all the players' names and hometowns and I can remember as a kid doing the same thing, and if there was ever a kid predestined for stardom, it was this guy right here throwing the football. Amen, Dean, and he throws a strike down to the 26-yard line on third and eight for the first down. Joey Kent picking up 16 yards for Tennessee. This offense is in sync. Well, it sure is. The one nice thing about Peyton Manning, as I've stated, he's got great footwork. You know, he looks a little bit awkward because he's six feet five inches. But he moves his feet well, sets them well. He's got a nice high release. And Man throws the football real well. Looks like we've got a few video problems right now. We'll try and straighten out. Manning is shooting the lights out. Trying to turn him back on, and we do. Apologize for the technical difficulty. Graham running off tackle over the right side. Brought down by Tim Sharp. Jake Graham, the workhorse in the backfield. 
Gaining 797 yards this year on the ground and 11 touchdowns rushing. Yeah, the year before, though, he had 1,438 yards, and that's where he expected to really step up this year. But you know what? So many teams picked Tennessee to what, finish first in the country and everything else. The same thing happened with USC, Mark. These prognosticators never take a look at the offensive line. I mean, when you turn over the offensive line, you have four people lead the offensive line. We went to the pros. You know, you're just not going to have people step in and do great. On second and eight, the quick slant again. The pattern du jour of choice and the receiver of choice today. Peerless Price, another reception brought down by Barry Gardner, picking up 13 that time. And they move the sticks once again with 2.25 to play in the first quarter. Tennessee leading by a couple of touchdowns. Price has caught three balls today for a total of 68 yards and one touchdown reception. That's his real name, Peerless. One of the great names of college football this season. First down and 10 for Tennessee. They can get a first down without scoring. Kent lined up to the short side of the field, and that's him. Joey Kent, touchdown. He takes it to the house. Number 11, an 11-yard 11 touchdown strike. And he's working on number 11, and it's a complete mismatch right now. Joey Kent had a lot of nagging injuries this year, his knee, his hamstring. He's about 100% right now. But he puts a veteran move on a kid who's starting his first game today, and it's just, I mean, it's just a complete mismatch. Tennessee marching down the field. And how much do they miss, Northwestern, that is, Hudefa is Mailey right now. To no disrespect, of course, of Conway, it's a function and a product of experience. You lose a junior and put a freshman in there. Jeff Hall with the extra point. Joey Kent with the touchdown. Tennessee leading. Yards receiving this year. His second consecutive 1,000-yard season in a row. A first in the SEC. Father Joe was a quarterback at Alabama A&M, assistant coach. That's right, and he prevailed upon John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, to recruit him and come to Tennessee. He didn't catch many balls in high school. Good catch by Tennessee. Here's Beasley on the return for the Wildcats. Still on his feet, out to the 28-yard line. Nice return by Beasley, brought down by Eric Lane, the backup fullback. One more look at that touchdown catch by Joey Kent of Tennessee. What you do is spread out an offense and you get your isolation right here. Joey Kent with Gerald Conaway. Now just watch after the catch how the veteran gets the football, sets up, gives that little move inside, and it goes back outside, gives himself enough room on the sideline. Conaway has no chance. I mean, that's isolating a defensive weakness, isolating the scheme, and then isolating the personnel and taking advantage of it. And that's what Tennessee has done successfully now twice against Gerald Conaway. And now, John, we get a look, our first look, at Adrian Autry, the other Autry, number 32 in the backfield. And he gets the carry in. Well, it's the same result. Different name, but the same result. Jeff Coleman, number 92, leading the charge for the Volunteers. Now, Coleman's going to be backing up at defensive tackle today because they are thin in the ranks there. They've had three injuries up front. Leonard Little, of course, they're all SEC and sack leaders got hurt against South Carolina. He's coming back from a knee injury. Billy Ratliff got hurt. Ron Green is the most recent injury. And defensively now, Tennessee can take a lot more chances with that front up front and, and run some twists and stunts and things like that and penetrate this Northwestern offense. Uso in motion on the blitz. Bates, the hot receiver. And Bates is out to the 38-yard line. Near a first down, brought down by Terry Fair. Well, coming up next, folks, the Rose Bowl from Pasadena, California. The Arizona State Wildcats, Sun Devils, and 11-0 tackle the Ohio State Buckeyes at 10-1. If Arizona State wins and Florida State loses tomorrow in the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Arizona State could end up national champs. Stanley Jackson will be starting for Ohio State. John Cooper made that announcement a couple of days ago, settled down that quarterback position between Stanley Jackson and Joe Germain. And look at that, John. Like the previous case, <laughs> Northwestern about four or five inches short of the first down again with one minute to play in the first quarter. 
Last time they went for it on fourth down. Right now it's only third and one. Look at some other results from bowl action. Mac Brown's crews had a great season, although they lost at Virginia, a game we did here on ABC. Disappointing. Keldorf isn't playing to get it today. Their quarterback who had such a great season hurt himself and did not, did not play in this football game today, so they're still doing well. A little movement up front. And Lennon littering the field. Right of the snap. Contact by the defense, number 47. Five-yard penalty against the defense. First down. Tyrone Hines, the middle linebacker, the team's leading tackler. A little anxious on that play. Yeah, Hines right there, number 47, likes to play in that guard center gap. Sometimes he shoots it, sometimes he doesn't. It gives the lineman a lot to think about. That time he's just a little bit over anxious. Did you see him when he crossed the line? He tried to freeze like nobody <laughs> would see him. There's only 67,000 other people here, including some officials. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Tennessee leading 21 0, coming with a blitz. Snur under heavy heat. Snur drilled, brought down at the 33 yard line. Brown and Craig King, number 44, making the tackle. Yeah, they finally got to him with Craig King, but there were some bodies flying around there, wasn't there? That Linebackers coming up. There's a good pickup initially. Somebody went head over heels. But right now, Tennessee can play the kind of defense they want to. John Chavis, now this defense has been overlooked as one of the best defenses in the country. They're ranked number five in total defense. The top defense in the SEC. Well, the first 15 minutes at the CompUSA Florida Citrus Bowl is in the books, and they're playing Rocky Top. Tennessee leads 21-0 when we come back. If you are seated in section 106. Along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins, Happy New Year from all of us here at ABC, to all of you at home, all the best of health and prosperity in 1997. Well, uh, Northwestern, John, playing like they got the lampshade on top of their heads, though, from last night's party. Not exactly a prosperous New Year so far for them. 21-0, Steve Schnurr with the ball, second and 19. Incomplete, out of the backfield, intended for Adrian Autry, number 32. And it'll be third and long. Autry filling in right now for Darnell Autry. And just in case you joined us, Darnell woke up this morning, as reported by our Dean Blevins on the sidelines, with a temperature of close to 102 degrees. First, he was not going to start. He told the coaches he didn't think it could go. Then, just as they were coming out for their first offensive possession, he said, I'll give it a shot, which he did. But right now, it is the other Autry, Adrian, in the backfield on third down and 19. Three wide receiver set. And Schnur slips and falls on the turf at the 23-yard line. It's been that type of afternoon so far for the Wildcats. An unproductive first 15 minutes for Northwestern offensively. A loss of 10 yards on that last play. You know, Steve Schnur has been rattled early in this game. He's had some balls tipped and batted, one for an interception. He's been knocked down quite a bit today. He's just not getting off to a real good start. And this Northwestern team has got to find something, perhaps a defensive turnover, to ignite this football team and get back into this game. Paul Burton, John, standing on his own nine-yard line, one of the top punters of the Big Ten. And you can't tell by that kick. <laughs> he hit our cameraman. <laughs> he doinked our cameraman <laughs> at the 46-yard line. <laughs> that man, he's a celebrity. Well, you heard of the coffin corner. That's the camera corner. A 13-yard punt. Everyone gets a little moment in the sun, huh? Heads up. We'll be right back. And lost to Tennessee. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's been a disappointing year for them. And, you know, it's funny. You look at Ohio State with one loss. You look at this team today, Tennessee, with two losses. People shake their heads and say, you know, it wasn't a great year. But that's, uh, you know, that's when you raise that standard as high as these programs have, Ohio State, Tennessee. And Northwestern is joining that kind of way of raising the standard and the bar that uh, when you have more than a couple of losses, it's a disappointing year. Look at that. On the reverse. This is Dustin Moore at the tight end. 
Well, he pushed can out run, of bounds. Can he? Yeah, sure does move well. A little agility by the big tight end. Pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. The SEC, one of the toughest conferences in America. And one of their best, their best, Florida, taking on Florida State in the Nokia Sugar Bowl tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. The national championship on the line in that game. And the SEC batting 1,000 so far if Alabama holds on and beats Michigan in their bowl games. Certainly batting 1,000 here today. Sure are. Second and seven. They want to pass it and sat back at the 44-yard line. That's T. Martin, the backup yep. quarterback. He's a freshman. He's a guy who decided to come to Tennessee, actually, because he actually, uh, as a freshman, came here because he was thinking about going to Auburn, and then he decided that, uh, well, Damian Craig was going to probably play his career out. Peyton Manning was going to leave early, so he thought he'd take a chance and come to this game. Well, lots of smoke down there. Dean, what's up? Well, maybe Dean is uh, inhaling some of that smoke right now. A lot, of, a lot of smoke down on the field. Not sure what's happening. Third down and 17 for the Volunteers. Manning, plenty of time. And he fumbles it, pounces on it, and falls out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Well, this is the first time Northwestern has stopped Tennessee today. Up till now, they were three for three on touchdown. So maybe, uh, you know, they didn't get a turnover defensively, but a defensive stand is certainly better than what they've had so far. And for the first time, we hear a chorus of cheers coming from the fans wearing purple. And there's actually more of them than there are Tennessee fans, even though Tennessee averages over 100,000 per game at home. And that is the ever-dangerous Brian Musso back for the punt return. Larry Binion standing at his own 45. He'll try and pooch this one. Musso calls for the fair catch, lets it go over his head and into the end zone. So Northwestern will start on its own 20-yard line after that 41-yard punt by Binion. It's a volunteer type of day so far. Northwestern with 18 seniors playing in their final game for head coach Gary Barnett. Right now, it is paramount that they achieve some semblance of offensive continuity. They have the ball first down and 10 from the 20-yard line. 12.54 to play in the se second quarter. Darnell Autry, not Adrian, but Darnell, back in the ball game at tailback now. Wildcats have run 14 plays on offense, and they only have six yards of total offense in this game. Darnell Autry out near the 24-yard line. Tackled by Jason Parker. Look at Darnell, number 24. And speaking of numbers, you see that patch on their shoulder. It says Big Six. Playing with a memory today. Twelve and a half minutes to play. Autry, three carries for one yard. Second down and six for the Wildcats. Backs out of the eye. It's Darnell Autry again. Flags all over the field. Let's find out what that big six patch is about. Dean? Well, Mark, that's worn in honor of a fallen teammate, Marcel, Marcel Price. Uh, Big Six was his nickname, and just a horrible situation. Accidentally shot and killed in the summer of 95 in his home. That was in his hometown of Nashville. And the team wore that patch last year and then requested to wear it again this year until the time Marcel would have graduated. And many players have mentioned that um, he's inspired them, even though he's not been around physically uh, in, in them being so successful the past two years. You know, they said they said Marcel is part of the thrilling victories they had uh, when they beat Notre Dame by one point uh, two years ago in that opener. 
They felt that Ron Paulus, when he tripped for the two-point conversion, that was a tackle by Marcel Price. So they, they feel like he's with them in spirit, Dean, throughout this entire season and through when the period he would have graduated. On second and one, Autry stopped up short of the first down. Hines making the tackle. Let's check in with John Saunders in the Big Easy. John. Mark, it's the Merrill Lynch Bowl Report alongside Todd Blackledge. Alabama, not much offense in this one, but they get it when they need it. Yeah, they get the big play from Sean Alexander, the big running play. Dennis Riddle and Sean Alexander, a good tandem running the football for Alabama. A lot of emotion. Gene Stallings' last football game. 46 yards of the touchdown run for Stallings. This would be win number 70 at Alabama. Back to you, Mark. Alabama losing a great man in Gene Stallings as head coach. Third down and two for Northwestern. Oh. Quick three-step drop complete for the first down. That's Dwayne Bates at the 39-yard line. The tall, rangy junior making the catch, working on Terry Fair. He picks up 11 yards on the play. You know, the interesting thing about Dwayne Bates, too, is this is only his second full year playing wide receiver. He was recruited as a quarterback on the scout team his freshman year. He started running some patterns to help out. He did a real nice job with it, and he felt very comfortable playing wide receiver. And then, uh, of course, last year he started to play in that position. And now, as a junior, he's playing wide receiver as well as anybody ever has for the Wildcats. 11.04 to play in the first half. Bates, four catches for 42 yards. Autry. Back up from the line of scrimmage. You know, quarterback Steve Schnurr told me a couple of days ago the pivotal point in their season was their game against the Michigan Wolverines. It was a riveting, compelling game. Lots of emotion. And Northwestern came out on top in that game. It changed their whole season, he feels. Second down and nine for Northwestern. The nose of the ball resting on the 40-yard line. Brian Musso in motion to the top of your screen. Quick drop complete to Musso at the 43-yard line. Five short of the first down. I was talking about that Michigan game. Here it is. With time running out, Northwestern trailing by two. Brian Goins kicks a 39-yard field goal. They line it up, and it's good, right? Well, not quite. The referee waves it off, forced to do it again. And Goins is unfazed, undaunted, nails it a second time giving the Wildcats their biggest win of the season. They kicked it again because they had snapped it before the play was whistled in. Third down and four now for the Wildcats. They get to the 49 for the first down. Darnell Autry has the first down, and that's the Darnell Autry we're used to seeing, running authoritatively that time out to the 39 of Tennessee, picking up 15 yards, John. Parker making the tackle. You know, that's a beautiful job by Autry. And maybe he can inspire his football team. They ran a little quick screen to him. Chad Pugh, number 77. See him there on the right side of your screen. He gets out on the right side, throws a block. There's 77 flying across the field. But this is what Autry does so well. I think he breaks tackles well. He's really strong, solid frame, 210 pounds. People bounce off of him. And like all good actors, great improvisational skills. Brought down at the 40-yard line that time, though, by Tyrone Hines, number 47 for Tennessee. You know, what I'm really impressed with, though, first down yardage, which is so key for any defense, Tennessee is really shutting down Northwestern. I mean, you know, everybody looks at Peyton Manning and the offense, but this defense this year for Tennessee has done an exceptional job all year. You know, they held every team they played against, with the exception of Georgia, to under their season's average offensively. So you know, there's a defense that takes advantage of what the offense does. And large credit goes right there to John Chavis, the defensive coordinator in the second year. A lot of people question whether he should have been hired or not. They wanted a name player like Mike DuBose from Alabama. But he was hired. And then uh, last year, they gave up 62 points to Florida, and they're really getting after Chavis. But, uh, He's done an excellent job with this team. There have been a lot of teams that have given up a lot of points to Florida. <laughs> You'll see Florida and Florida State tomorrow in the Nokia Sugar Bowl on ABC. Penalty against the Volunteers, which moves the ball just inside Tennessee's 
25 yard line. He has a personal foul call. It's a second one against this team today. So it gives Northwestern excellent field position. Adrian Autry in the game. Tennessee blitzing. Bates in the end zone. Interference against the Volunteers. Raymond Austin, number 28, right there. No doubt the culprit. Yeah, they ran the old out and up against Raymond Austin. Schnur had some time. And he pumped fake. They've run a couple of outs and some short slants and some underneath things to the wide receiver. So that play was set up to the wide side of the field. But there is a flag again on the field. Let's see. I mean, in addition to the interference, it's offside. So right now, the Wildcats get their choice of which penalty, and they'll obviously take the interference call. John, this is their best offensive drive so far today. Let's look at the offsides first. It looks actually somebody lined up in the neutral zone bottom of the screen that looks like Corey Terry number 22 right there now let's look at Austin you see a little bump outside a pump fake and another bump right there and that's where the penalty is called that was bump and grind the all the way number 92 was lined up in the neutral zone that penalty is declined we have pass interference against number 28 on the defense that penalty is 15 yards and accepted first down. Okay, so I thought it was Corey Terry, 22. It's actually 92, Jeff Coleman, who was offside. So, you know, Gary Barnett is concerned, but again, this football team knows how to get back, scratch, claw its way back into football games, and they're doing that right now. Some Northwestern fans might say right now, we've got Tennessee right where we want them. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Philip Fulmer, the brain trust on the other side of the field for Tennessee. First and goal for Northwestern. Coach champs of the Big Ten. Their first meeting ever against Tennessee. McGrew in motion. McGrew gets the call on the running play, and he falls forward, maybe, maybe, gaining a yard on the play. The big senior at six feet, 218 pounds. From Chicago Heights, Illinois, number 45. He's filling in for Matt Hartle, who was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease earlier this season. You know, if I'm not mistaken, that is his first carry of the year. I mean, you talk about a change-up play. Guy goes a whole year playing fullback. You don't give him a carry. You finally give him the ball, and he doesn't get a single yard out of the play. <laughs> so much for the big change-up. Yeah, good way to start 1997 for McGrew. McGrew in motion. Second and goal. Schnur incomplete to Bates. Yeah. And number 13, Terry Fair, was holding him like a hostage on that play. Yeah, that's twice in that part of the field. Again, the wide side of the football field, you can get that isolation one-on-one. -on -one. Now, Terry Fair is the better of the cornerbacks on this team. And he doesn't get a whole lot of attention, actually, from offenses. But again, you can see, watch Bates go for the football. There, they're bumping into one another. The field judge is behind it, sees the whole thing, and he calls the penalty on Terry Fair. And a look at Schnur's reaction. Says, yep, that's the way we do it. Now, Northwestern has seven first downs in this game. Four have been by penalty. Nothing wrong with a free pass once in a while. No, not at all. I don't think uh, that man right there wants his team to be quite so generous on this New Year's Day. <laughs> the ball resting at the two-yard line for Northwestern and quarterback Steve Snow. First and goal. Darnell Autry in the backfield. The option. Touchdown, Wildcats. He's an actor, but that was no act. That was the real thing. As Darnell Autry puts Northwestern on the board with their first six of the game. Playing with 102 degree temperature. And this team never runs the option. Al Wilson comes through. Just about cream Steve Schnur, but he gets rid of the football. I watched some game tape on them. Didn't see any option plays at all. So that's a change up for them offensively, and it works for a touchdown. Yeah, first McGrew getting that carry, and then Autry on the option. Goins in for the extra point, and the score now stands 21 to 7 with 7.45 to play in the first half. Under the sunny skies of Orlando, we'll be right back. Ryan Goins set to kick off. Mark Levine. 
Northwestern scoring moments ago on an option play. Darnell Autry took it in. They go for the onside kick. They got to let it go 10 yards. Still loose. And the Wildcats have recovered at their own 41-yard line. And I believe it just did go 10 yards. You see the Northwestern players were hesitant to touch it up until it went to that 10-yard period. But when a volunteer player had a chance to touch the football, it became live. Just like a punt muff at that point, if it goes beyond 10 yards, it's everybody's opportunity to get the football. John Kevin Buck, number nine, their backup Hawk linebacker, recovers the kick. See, the ball just doesn't quite go as fast. as Everybody stays away from it. Now a Tennessee player touches it. That's number 90, Graf Corby, a wide receiver, right there. So he tries to get that football. He doesn't, he doesn't secure it. It slips out. Kevin Buck gets the football. And here we go with Northwestern. So Gary Darnell, bit of a riverboat gambler. Yeah, really going for it, fourth and one in his own territory, and right here. And Darnell Autry in the backfield. The slant, incomplete, intended for Tucson Waterman. Let's go to New Orleans with John Saunders. Time for the Merrill Lynch Bowl Report, and Michigan not quite out of this one yet, Todd. No, Brian Greasy does a nice job getting the ball to Shaw. Watch the move here. Michigan, sixth possession inside the Alabama 30-yard line. First time they come away with a touchdown. They go for the two-point conversion and get it. It is now just a field goal separating them. In the Gator Bowl, North Carolina leads West Virginia. Mark, back to you. All right, fellas. You know, you can't sleep on Northwestern. They are used to coming back in games, although they trail right now 21 to 7. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Snow snapped back at the 31-yard line. They brought the pressure. Buck Buxton with Tennessee's second sack of the afternoon. They blew him up right away. And now Buck Buxton, number 97, is starting in place of Ron Green, who's banged up now. You're going to see pressure right on the outside there as he comes through. Nice right through. Oh, on a swim move. Boy, that's just good technique. I mean, you know, that's just bad play by an offensive guard. He gets beat right out of his stance. Third and 19 now. Tennessee defensively had 30 sacks this season. That's their seventh straight season with 30 or more sacks. Third and 19. Nur has time this time. Wide open and dropped near midfield. Waterman. You won't see that happen often. Uh, Tucson Waterman has only caught 12 passes this year, but he's really not the go-to guy in this offense, but he has reliable hands. He works real well as a blocker. And he comes wide open in the middle of the field. Schnur finds him, and Barnett's got to be shaking his head. You know, they wasted that great opportunity that was set up by the onside kick uh, return. Paul Burton into punt, we think. <laughs> After that onside kick, you never know. Terry Fair standing at his own 30-yard line for Tennessee. Burton shanked one already today. This one, not one of his better punts either. It's a good bounce, but it'll come out to about the 28 or 29. A Northwestern player touched it right there. We'll be right back. 21-7 to score. Peyton Manning has been near flawless offensively. Ball at the 29-yard line. First and 10. Manning 10 of 13 today. A couple of touchdown passes. 161 yards in all. Northwestern changing up their looks defensively. And they run it. They may even lose a yard. That's Jay Graham brought down by Matt Rice. Don't forget coming up next, it's the Arizona State Sun Devils against the Ohio State Buckeyes in the Rose Bowl from Pasadena. That's coming up next. Arizona State undefeated. And if they win, they have a legitimate claim to the national title. That's Matt Rice who made the play on that last play. You know, he's such an integral part of this defense. Watch him. He lines up in the guard center gap and tries to occupy two players. That allows Pat Fitzgerald to go around unblocked and make plays and make tackles, and that's what he's so good at doing. Second down and 12, Manning complete over the middle out to the 30-yard line. 
And it looks to me like they've stepped up their intensity a little bit on defense now, Mark. I think, uh, you know, not playing in six weeks, this whole team is getting back into it. Now watch Rice. Watch how he occupies that gap. There's Fitzgerald behind him. Boom, the center and the guard have to account for him. Look at him push right through there. They say his motor just never stops running throughout a football game. And again, he's trying to keep people free for Fitzgerald. But I like the intensity I've seen in these first two plays here. Now in the fifth drive for Tennessee. And they've made it third and long Northwestern has now for Tennessee. Third and nine. Manning flushed out of the pocket. Flagged down at the 26-yard line. And the pass completed the 42 to Peerless Price, picking up 12 yards. But will it stand? Here's the call. It's against the Volunteers. Well, we've seen seven first downs, four by penalty offensively for the Wildcats. Now they get a first down denied to Tennessee by penalty. Mistakes are hurting Tennessee right now in this football game. The eight penalties for 78 yards. Number 75 on the offense, five-yard, ten-yard penalty. Repeat the third down. It's the old five-yard, ten-yard penalty right there. Mercedes Hamilton, the right guard, number 75. Lined up right here, Mercedes Hamilton, who has started the last three games, getting a push. See, now the, the stunt and the twist affects him. He's trying to zone block that. He actually falls back. And you know what? Officials call that a lot. When an offensive lineman falls back and people stumble over him, they automatically assume that there's a hold and that it's a takedown. And that's not always the case. From watching that, I wouldn't say he necessarily held on that play. Third and Lake Okeechobee to go. And Manning goes down at the eight-yard line. Same problem that Steve Schnur had. Dropping back on third down and slipping and falling. So this was a backwards offense for Tennessee. You know, keep in mind with the rules this year, you have to use small spikes. If you don't, you get thrown out of the football game. It's a quarter inch spikes. It's a low cut field. It's a little bit of dew on it from the humidity. No and Manning falls down. He usually has pretty good footwork. And there's no crown on that field either because they have a soccer plate here. Binion with a low line drive punt fielded by Musso at the 43. Brian Musso puts Northwestern in auspicious field position at the 31-yard line. A 12-yard return by Musso on that 34-yard punt. Hines making the tackle for Tennessee. You know, we had talked about comebacks now for Northwestern. They were 10 points down against Indiana. They beat them. 16 down to Michigan. They beat them. Remember the Wisconsin game? Ron Dane puts the ball on the ground. They have no timeouts left. Northwestern, two-play drive in 47 seconds. They win that football game. They beat Illinois with a TD with 102 remaining. This team knows how to play in close football games, and they know how to come from behind. Five of their nine victories this year, Mark, have been by four points or less. They want to get this one close now. Barnett watching from the sidelines, his team first and 10. Schnurr. Incomplete intended for Musso at the 22-yard line. And number 13, Terry Fair, really close on the ball. That's, exact, that's exactly right. He made a great break on the football. That play was there initially. It was set up well. He diagnosed it. And, you know, that's what they call closing speed in a cornerback. That's when they recognize what's going on. They can get there, and he knocked that football away. Sets up second down and 10 from the 31-yard line. Northwestern falling under the spotlight, both regionally in the Chicago area and nationally as a result of his works. Coach Barnett. Tennessee blitzing. Schnurr finds Bates. Run out of bounds to the 25, about five yards short of the first down. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Mark, you mentioned the popularity of Gary Barnett. You know, in the past couple of years, he's gone from a virtual unknown to one of the most popular coaches in all of college football. An example, he and Pat Fitzgerald on this week's TV Guide. And Gary Barnett told us in our meeting the other day that he, is at, he has about 160 requests to, for him to speak. Apparently a great motivational speaker. This guy's more than just a good-looking, charismatic guy. He is a great motivator. He communicates. He inspires, and I thought his answer in regard to the Notre Dame opportunity or potential opportunity saying, you know, the best job is not what other people perceive to be the best job, but what you perceive to be the best job. I thought that made all the sense in the world. Yeah, he held our attention. Thanks a lot, Dean. He held our attention well during our meetings. Third and three. Musso complete. 
near the marker, and he'll have the first down at the 20-yard line with 4.04 to play in the first half. You know, one of the things that Dean talked about, master motivator, you know, he, he reminds me of George Allen, and he admitted as such. I, I had the pleasure of meeting George Allen. He was my training camp once with the Eagles, and, you know, he said, I said, week to week, how do you get your players up? And he said, I try to capture the essence of the game each week and explain it to my players. I said, what happens if there's nothing there? He says, then I create a crisis. So he'll write little notes to his players. He'll pull them aside. He does, he does little things to try to keep the interest of his players week in and week out. And he says you grow only from stress. They're putting some stress on the defense, but it's incomplete intended for Bates in the end zone. And it'll be third down now. Terry Fair in on the coverage. Yeah, and they're also double covering. Terry Fair underneath. Jason Parker came over the top to safety. Right now, Dwayne Bates has been the go-to guy in this offense, so they're going to take him out of the offense and see if Brian Musso or Toussaint Waterman can beat them in the passing game right now. It's a good move defensively by John Chavis. Got to get to the 10-yard line, Northwestern does, for the first down. Check that now. The clock had it wrong. It's now second down and 10. They're 9 of 16. Tennessee coming with pressure. Musso! And Musso will take it to the house. Touchdown, Wildcats. Oh, what, what a move. Boy, he stopped on a dime and didn't leave Tennessee any change. That was a move by Musso. Well, they're taking away Dwayne Bates. They bring the blitz. Ryan Musso, number 22, lined up right here. He's going to slant in. That's a hot adjustment. But what? watch what he does after he catches the football. He knows where the coverage is coming from. He knows where he's going to get hit. And both safeties are left grasping at air. Tori Noel and Jason Parker didn't even get a hand on Brian Musso. Goins with the extra point, low snap. They get it down. And we told you moments ago, don't sleep on Musso or the Wildcats. They trail by just a touchdown now. Along with Dean Blevins and John Spagnola. Northwestern marching back, starting to make some noise under the mist. Cooling off on the sidelines. They trail by just seven now. You know, Tennessee gained 199 yards in the first quarter, taking that 21-0 lead mark. Second quarter, minus 10 yards. Northwestern scores two touchdowns, and they're right back in this football game. You know, the Tennessee coach has mentioned to us that they had to fight the perception a Big Ten team is like Northwestern being big, but a little bit on the slow side. That's not necessarily the case. Loose ball of the 20. Tennessee picks it up. And the momentum swinging towards the purple. National title hopes on the line tomorrow in New Orleans at the Superdome. Florida State, the Seminoles led by Warwick Dunn against Florida and Heisman Trophy winner Danny Werfel. Nokia Sugar Bowl tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And what about the war of words <laughs> between the two coaches? Bobby Bowden said it best. He says, hey, they send out five receivers. We're bringing six. Somebody's going to get hit. Somebody's going to get I love that answer. And I, you know, Spurrier likes to draw him up and get people out downfield. But he does not protect his quarterback. Nebraska realized that last year in that national championship game. And, of course, in Tallahassee, that same thing happened. Now, John, you can hear the gang that has traveled from Evanston, Illinois. Jay Graham, light feet, showing some agility out to the 33-yard line, about two yards short of the first down. Eric Gardner, number 55, making the tackle along with Collier for Northwestern. Collier, the leader in the secondary back there, a 6'1", 213-pound senior from Dixon, Illinois, an organizational studies major. And when you look at the majors, John, of these... Northwestern players, uh, biochemical engineering, nuclear physics. It's, it's kind of daunting. They're not taking rocks for jocks. I know that. <laughs> These guys are splitting atoms. Fumble. Northwestern takes it back. Flags down. Northwestern has the ball once again in Tennessee territory. Mike Nelson, number 26, recovered the fumble after Tim Sharp made the hit.
The officials sorting out the flag. And they'll tack on some more yardage against Tennessee as the result of a face mask. Jay grabs the ball carrier, gets the ball on the right side. There's a good opening. He has a first down here. And right there, that ball is knocked loose. Dewan DuBose, number 88, gets a hand on. That's when it starts to come out. And there you see the face mask on Mike Nelson. Right there, let's see if somebody gets a hand on the inside there. No, actually, it's Tim Sharp, number 52. And the question is, let's take another look at that. Were his knees down on the ground as that ball started to come out? Look awfully close. Maybe we can get another look at that. Much to the dismay and chagrin of Phil Fulmer. One more slow look, John. Okay, let's see. Let's keep it real. Now, again, this is how that ball. Now, his knees are down. Look where the ball is right now. Does he have control of it? Knees down, ball in his hands. Now it starts to come out. Certainly, the referee's ruled it was on its way out, and it's a legitimate turnover. Northwestern Wildcats poised and ready to pounce on the opportunity after this time out. Time out on the field called by Northwestern. And while we catch our breath, we'll check in with some more stellar programming on ABC. Steve Schnur, the senior quarterback, one of numerous seniors playing their last game for head coach Gary Barnett. You know, it's interesting about Schnur. Look at, look at all the people who grabbed. These are the people who came in and Gary Barnett basically sold him a bill of goods. Said, you know, I know we've lost. No, we haven't had a winning season here since 1971. That's all going to change. And, you know, many coaches have come through that Evanston, Illinois, and said the very same thing. These players believe, led by Pat Fitzgerald and Steve Schnur and everybody else on that list, and he honored them yesterday at the lunch, made them stand up and waved to everybody at the luncheon we had yesterday with the comp usa people and is it hot down on the sidelines what do you think even our dean blevins is working up a good lather down there last time we checked in with him uh could have done one of those uh any person commercials <laughs> brian musso flanked out the grew in motion this is darnell autry do you think he's feeling okay do you think he's feeling okay he's feeling a lot better right now 28 yards on the run and another northwestern touchdown just like that well he's got a 102 degree temperature so yeah you could say he's on fire the tide has turned in a huge way in favor of the wildcats Goins in to tie the game for Northwestern. Tennessee jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead. Northwestern has stormed back with three consecutive scores. The last one by Autry. Watch Mike McGrew right here, number 45. He's faking to the right. He comes back to the left. It's a counter tray play. He's actually that backside tackle in that play. And Darnell Autry comes right through. Great blocking up front. And he powers through. Now, the counter tray you can do with a tackle or guard, C45. He gets behind the guard. The guard throws a great block. He comes right through, and Darnell Archery squirts through for a touchdown. What a heroic effort by Darnell Archery. Not expected to play in this game. Not expected to do much of anything in this football game. And he has helped ignite this football team and get him back in the game. Autry, no doubt, drinking a lot of fluids and taking a lot of liquids on the sidelines. And I wonder if he'll take an IV at halftime, get, you know, try to get even more fluids into his system that much more quickly. John Northwestern with two touchdowns in the last one minute and one second. Three touchdowns in the last five minutes and 18 seconds. And a scoring orgy of sorts by Northwestern. Fielded at the 13. Brought down at the 33 is Eric Westmoreland. With 2.19 to play in the first half, Tennessee started off with a 21-0 lead and were knotted at 21. 
you know, it's been a tale of two quarters, too, for the Volunteers. Maiden, um, Peyton Manning, rather, was 13-20 to 20 in the first quarter, you know, with the two touchdown passes. Only one of eight in the second quarter. And, and frankly, they've gone away from throwing the football here in the second quarter. I, I don't really understand why. That last fumble didn't help their cause on the run either. Man. Four receivers out for the Volunteers. 2.19 to play in the half. Manning to pass. Is it complete? No. He picked it up off the grass at the 45. Joey Kent, the intended receiver. Dean, the tide has really changed, hasn't it? Well, it has, and it, there's a major mood swing going on, but really it's more in the stands than on the, the Northwestern sideline. You know, the North, Northwestern bunch is a seasoned group, a veteran bunch, and they didn't lose their composure when they fell behind. And I tell you what, the, the people in screen right end zone are really excited because every point, all 42, scored in that end zone. Good point. That's why we have you down there, Dean, <laughs> to figure out things like that for us. On the blitz, Northwestern bringing it. Picked up. And you know what? Joey Kent has got quick. He's going to cut it back. Joey Kent turns the blitz into a Tennessee touchdown. 67 yards and Peyton Manning picked it up and delivered it yeah Peyton Manning there he is with Collier right there who came on the blitz and Peyton Manning held that football till the last possible second and allowed Joey Kent to get as free as possible in the pass pattern 12 for 16 231 yards and just like that the volunteers take the lead watch 33 on the right side Eric Collier, look, he comes right through on the blitz. He gets tripped a little bit. Manning stands tall in the pocket, delivers the football to Joey Kent. Joey Kent gets some blocks downfield, makes a nice cutback right here. Peerless Price helped him 37. And he's into the end zone. There's an unsportsmanlike penalty that was called against Tennessee, obviously for excessive celebration. And that will, of course, will be assessed after the kickoff. And we have an injured player on the field. Yeah, John, that's Mercedes Hamilton, number 75 for Tennessee. You know, so many times you hear people say, oh, why are they playing a prevent with two minutes left and this and that? I mean, this time, Northwestern comes with the blitz. Remember, Jerry Brown is calling defenses for Northwestern. He took over for the prior defensive coordinator, Ron Vanderlinden, who's now the head coach at Maryland as Hamilton gets helped off the football field. So there's a little bit of a change in that defensive staff for Northwestern. It's a good change. When you have success, coaches get an opportunity to move on and get jobs elsewhere. And Philip Fulmer himself, a former assistant coach at Tennessee. Yeah, you think the WAC officials have anything to do with this? I mean, you know, they, they're so used to these high-scoring games. They've seen a few shootouts. <laughs> Jeff Hall with the extra point attempt. And the Volunteers regaining, recapturing the lead at 28 to 21 with 150 to play in the first half. And I guess Northwestern just doesn't feel comfortable unless they're trailing. <laughs> no, they, really they gave don't. it right back. They said, okay, let's see if we can get back in. Yeah, we can get back in. Okay, let's fall behind again. It's an amazing team. If you followed this team for the last two years, you've got to be on some sort of heart medication, I would think. <laughs> Don't forget, the college football extravaganza continues on ABC tomorrow night, January 2nd, 8 Eastern from New Orleans in the shadows of Bourbon Street, Florida State against Florida. That's 11-0 against 10-1, part two, the rematch. If Florida State wins, they could be the national champs. And that was a thermometer you saw as they were just checking Darnell Autry's temperature, and we're told that his temperature is down to 98.4. So I guess that touchdown run cooled him off a little bit, John. Either that, that's what they're telling him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's a lot higher than that. Uh, so you, hey, you're fine. Oh, yeah, you know you what? I think you worked the fever out. <laughs> you're doing fine. Just go back in there and keep scoring touchdowns. Jeff Hall set to kick off, and he'll kick off from his own 20-yard line as a result of the unsportsmanlike conduct infraction. David Beasley and Josh Barnes standing at the 15. This will be Beasley. Beasley, Beasley, Beasley. Beasley.
almost got through that initial wave of tacklers in the wedge. Well, he sure did. Sometimes you expect impact, and it never comes, and your body lean just takes you over, and you fall down. Fell forward to the 39-yard line, so Northwestern with a chance still to put some points on the board before the end of the first half with 151 to play in the first half, and they trail by seven points. Steve Schnur has had a fantastic second quarter. A panoramic view of the Citrus Bowl here in Orlando. Sold out over 66,000 people on hand. And in the backdrop, the skyline of Orlando. Darnell Autry, 98.4 degree temperature now, or so we're told. So Darnell may have been told. Tyrone Hines making the tackle for the Volunteers. It's been an exceptional week, a great week here. The Florida Citrus Bowl committee and the sponsors have treated us extremely well. Top USA people, pass incomplete. Stops the clock with 127 to play in the first half. Jonathan Brown tipping the ball at the line of scrimmage. The season started off in a very unpropitious way for Northwestern. They stumbled out of the gate losing at Wake Forest and then they went on a nice roll John yeah they sure did and everybody said after that first game out you know it's just a one-year wonder for this football team they strung together seven wins and they were just handled manhandled by Penn State that was their only other loss of the year and with one loss in the Big Ten their co-champions along with Ohio State third and nine sure had a little too much on that, and Brian Musso couldn't hang on to it. It's incomplete, and Tennessee will get the ball back with 1.21 to play in the first half. Musso telling us earlier, told me that he spent his Christmas holidays, John, with his relatives and his father, Johnny, down in Alabama. Now, you know what? I thought, you know, Schnur set this up. Watch how he comes through the pocket, and everything's set up real well for him, and it seems to me, as Musso goes through, he's got an opportunity to run right here. Instead, he elects to throw it across. Really too hard for Musso to handle. Brian Musso, yeah, he said, what, everybody was catching him, kissing him, and poking him, all his, squeezing him, all his Italian, uh, Italian relatives and everything. <laughs> his cheeks were all sore afterwards. <laughs> I read one word, place where he said if he could change one thing about the world, he said all girls would have a southern accent. <laughs> Brian Musso is a very handsome, engaging man playing great football here for the Wildcats. There is Burton. Gets off a better punt this time, drilling it back to the 15. And Fair runs out of bounds, stopping the clock with 1.11 to play, which is plenty of time when you have a quarterback like Peyton Manning. 44-yard punt. Two yards on the return by Fair as Peyton Manning gets set to take the field one more time. He wasn't on the field for a long time on the last possession. One pass, touchdown, and out. BYU leading Kansas State. We saw BYU in the WAC championship game, John. An exciting win over Wyoming. Game you saw on ABC. And Mercedes Hamilton with the aid of crutches coming off the field and into the locker room. And we'll get a report from Dean Blevins shortly. Graham Delone back, four receivers out on first and ten. Manning checking, Boomman up front, flags down. Let's go downstairs to Dean for an injury report. There you see Hamilton hobbling off, left ankle sprain. They don't believe it's serious enough to x-ray it, but they are going to look at it at half and see if he can come back for the second half. Looks like he's walking gingerly on that. Brent Gibson, number 51, will take over at that right guard position for Tennessee. That's Fitzgerald, number 31 for Northwestern. That's the 11th penalty for 107 yards. There's Brent Gibson, who actually started eight games this year at center. He got bumped out when Trey Teague moved from left tackle to center. So he's an experienced player. First down and 15 after the penalty. Hand it off. Oh, look at this running, Jay Graham. Pollard and finally brought down near the first down marker. Pick up a 14 on the play. Leary making the tackle. As we are under a minute to play now in the first half. Tennessee leading by seven points over Northwestern. Jake Graham last year was the offensive MVP here in the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. Yeah, you had a 154 yards rushing. They're resetting the clock on the field right now. 154 yards rushing, and he had a 69-yard touchdown that tied the score at 7-7. They're 
adding some time to the clock right now. That's 59 seconds left. You know, you watch Peyton Manning pass today, John, and he's been extremely accurate. Think about the way both he and Schnur threw at our banquet at our luncheon a couple of days ago. They were giving out door prizes, and our quarterbacks, respectively, were throwing out passes into the crowd and overshot their receivers. They were both for, times. Over four, they took out some china, some crystal, Hugh some silverware. Shandelier. It was uh, not a pretty sight. Few chandeliers. <laughs> yeah, right. Tennessee among the top programs in the country, and among the top programs, winning percentage-wise, in the 90s, winning 78%, 0.786. Yeah, it's funny about that, too, is that here, you know, Florida State's won the most games, Florida the third most, and that's what they're ranked this year. One and three. So. And we'll see those two teams tomorrow at 8 Eastern time in the Nokia Sugar Bowl here on ABC. National championship on the line. Coach is talking a lot of smack in that one, too. Second and one for Tennessee. Manning to the short side of the field. And it's ruled complete for the first down at the 29-yard line. Out of the backfield came Mark Levine, the second-string tailback, who made the catch. Move the chains and stop the clock with 54 seconds to play in the first half. A lot of offense here in the first 30 minutes. Manning wants more. Finds a seam in the zone, lacerating that secondary. Out to the 45-yard line. Joey Kent making the catch, picking up 16 yards. Another first down. Collier making the tackle, the strong safety. And that's what you just, I mean, that's what's so great about these wide receivers. They are so athletic going for the football. Joey Kent, Marcus Nash, both have great body control when they catch that football. Kent, four catches today for 110 yards. Manning on the money again. Complete. Another first down, stopping the clock with 36 seconds to play in the first half. That was Marcus Nash, who really emerged this year, John, as a great alternative and complement to Joey Kent. Yeah, he's number nine in career yards already. What I like is his change of direction. I mean, this is a simple out pattern. He's going against Faraji Leary, number 37. You know, this is just a two-yard pattern. Watch him accelerate after the football. Leary has the angle and says, oh, my gosh, no, I don't have the angle on him because of the acceleration of Marcus Nash. And that's another first down for Tennessee. The junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. 36 seconds to play in the first half. The ball in the Northwestern, 45. They take the draw complete. Peyton Manning is in rhythm, folks. Down to the 29-yard line, a 16-yard pickup. Andy McCullough, the 6'3 junior, making the catch. You know, Manning took a play from the Purdue handbook. Watch how this action freezes the linebacker. See how number 51 Fitzgerald steps up? That opens up the lane behind for the throw. Great call by Tennessee. They are now within field goal range for Hall. Manning gets him a little closer with that completion. He is slicing and dicing that secondary. Levine making the catch. Tack on 12 more yards to number 16's total. Boy, Manning came over all excited and calling timeout. This guy is like a rock star in Tennessee. I'm telling you, there are so many babies that have been born, that have been named Peyton in the last couple of years. And he's so famous that even this week, Johnny, had police and bodyguards escorting him to practice every day to guard against agents and professional autograph hounds. Yeah, they even named a baby giraffe after him who <laughs> <laughs> in Tennessee I mean you know you've hit the big time when they start naming animals after you and stuff but yeah you're right I mean and what's amazing about him is even though he comes from the football background and his father of course is a famous quarterback and everything else you know this is a guy that's got his heads on head on his shoulders he uh, he's gonna graduate in three years he's just driven to do all the things he wants to do at a better level than anybody else and no when we put our heads together, we come up with some pretty good reasons as to why he should stay in the school. Number five, for the junior, as you mentioned, he's graduating. Yeah, he doesn't have to go to class anymore, right? <laughs> so he can just stick around and have some fun. Very great reason for me. Sometimes you don't have to graduate to go not go to class either. Number four, hey, they get another shot at Florida if he comes back. Yeah, with think, a chance to beat them. Yeah, I think that's one thing that sticks in his craw a little bit. And number three offensive firepower lots of it returning John. yeah that whole offensive line and a lot of skilled people are coming back next year and that's something you have to consider and the second reason why Peyton Manning should come back shot at the Heisman Trophy 
and number one chance to win a national title something that he has always dreamed about Peyton Manning living out his football fantasy today on the field Collier was hurt on the last play he comes out of the game for Northwestern first and ten pass broken up nicely on the corner that was number 26 Mike Nelson coming in to break it up it was intended for Nash and that's a mismatch normally when you have a safety going against a wide receiver but Mike Nelson read the pattern and drove that thing quickly and I'm sure Tennessee's thinking he's getting a little bit aggressive they don't have much time left but an out and up would be a great call at this time we'll see what they do on the next play it'll be second down and 10 with 15 seconds to play in the first half Tennessee leads 28 21 that was Manning's first incompletion in this drive. He's five for six in this drive. He's human after all. Four receivers on this set. Manning on the post. Incomplete. A oh. no flag on the play. Intended for Peerless Price. And Gerald Conway being picked on time and again this afternoon. This time equal to the challenge. Peerless Price with the speed on this team. The one-on-one -on -one right here. He's going to run a slant in. Let's see if we see any contact by Gerald Conaway. He's breaking over the middle. There's a little grab on the right side. The official doesn't see it, and I don't think it's enough to call right there, although Peerless Price disagrees with me. Does he ever? In to attempt a field goal from 35 yards out is Jeff Hall. 10 of 18 on the year. Take one more look at that last play, John. From the other side, let's see what happens with the right hand. You know, it's on his hip, but that certainly isn't enough to warrant an interference call. You know, give credit to Conway. Here's the guy who's burned two times early in this game, comes back and makes a very big play in his first start as a redshirt freshman. Hall coming in to kick this field goal now. Here's a guy who struggled early this season, got off to a very rough start, missing five of 11 field goals. And he's had some back problems. And in maybe a medical first, an orthopedic surgeon, John, and a chiropractor have worked together on his therapy, and now he might not require surgery at the end of the season. Of course, chiropractors and orthopedic surgeons kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, <laughs> medically speaking. That is true. But, I mean, when you have that kind of disc problem, especially in the lower back, I mean, the kicking is, especially soccer-style kickers, it's, so much depends on the torque of that lower body, and that must really aggravate him. And hurt him a great deal. Coming up next on ABC, the Rose Bowl, Ohio State against the Arizona State Sun Devils from Pasadena, California. Brent Musburger, Dick Vermeil, and Jack Arut calling the action for you. Ten seconds to play in the first half. And it appears that if Tennessee will go for the first down. Manning in the ball game. So Hall staying on the sidelines. Peyton Manning, 12 pounds, one ounce at birth, has blossomed to 6'5, 218 pounds. John, we've really canonized him today, and deservingly so with his numbers. Some of his critics say that he's a little bit on the slight side, and that's the reason why he should come back next year. Well, I think he should come back simply because he should talk to Heath Schuler and talk to you, find out what happened with yeah. him after his junior year. Just three years ago, he played in this game here, came out after the Penn State game. But I think, you know, you can't get the kind of repetitions and quality work you can get in college. And I think he could still develop his skills as a quarterback, but it's awfully hard to turn down that money. I mean, you know, you're talking probably $20 million in some sort of package, even though there's a rookie salary cap in the NFL, you still have escape clauses and things like that. And that's got to be weighed in that whole decision that he's going to make. Look at those gaudy offensive numbers for Tennessee. 340 total offensive yards today. Most of them coming via the pass and the arm of Peyton Manning. You know, just to understand what's happening on the field here, the Wildcats called back-to-back -back timeout. They're expecting a field goal. They wanted to ice the kicker, Jeff Hall. Then Peyton Manning came off the field on the field. They weren't prepared defensively, so they had to call timeout again to go with their regular defensive unit. So... We're finally getting back in some action here with 10 seconds left. That's a little chess match between the two coaches as well. 10 seconds to go in the half. Third and 10. Manning into the end zone. Flag down. Incomplete. They were working on number 11 again. Conway. 
Yeah, Here but you know, Price. It's not really a bad penalty by Conaway because if he lets the ball get caught, it's a touchdown. There's only four seconds left. This definitely puts Tennessee in a situation where they either have to kick a field goal or go for it now and possibly wind up with no points. Conaway beaten deep. Tries the recovery, never looks for the football. He would have had a chance to play it, but he didn't want to take that chance. And I actually think this is a very good move on his behalf. Certainly beats turning around and getting beat for a touchdown. And again, it does it puts this team in field goal range, and they're gonna have to decide do they go for a touchdown? Because this is definitely be the last play of the half, or do they kick a field goal? And now Tennessee is going to take its last timeout and figure that out. Both teams without timeouts remaining now in the first half burning their respective three. Manning going to the sidelines, and John, you mentioned it's hard to turn down the money. When you talk about money, keep in mind that Peyton's father, Archie, has taken out a $5 million insurance policy on Peyton, and the term of the contract is for two years. Although Archie says, don't read into the two-year term too much, because he leaves the door open that Peyton might decide to go after this year. They're going to sit down and talk about things after this ball game. Yeah, Archie's collecting a lot of information. People were incredulous to learn that over the Christmas holidays, this discussion did not take place about whether Peyton would turn pro or not. They said they're just going to hold everything off. He's gathered information. He's talked to scouts, and they're going to make a decision in short order. Manning doesn't really have to make the decision, though, until late April because he is scheduled to graduate and that's kind of a new wrinkle in there as well but I don't think he's going to hold his team back and, and not make a decision as soon as possible do you recognize that guy that character that's the Grinch he didn't get my Christmas I don't know about <laughs> yours and the cat in the hat with those very fashionable in vogue hats right now uh, celebration of Dr. Seuss the pomp and pageantry coming up at halftime as is our John Saunders from New Orleans, the side of the Nokia Sugar Bowl coming up tomorrow at 8 Eastern time on ABC, Florida against Florida State. And now, Jeff Hall comes into the game to attempt the field goal for Tennessee. They're calling it a 19-yarder. Hall, 10 of 18 on the season. Out of the hold of Jason Price. And he knocks it between the steel. So the Volunteers take a 10-point lead into the locker room at halftime. A lot of points on the board in the first 30 minutes. More to come in the next 30. We'll return with more action between Tennessee and Northwestern after this. Happy New Year from Orlando, Florida and the Citrus Bowl, where Tennessee leads Northwestern 31-21. to Another renewal of the CompUSA Florida Citrus Bowl. Peyton Manning has been outstanding in the first half, John Spagnola. Yeah, he sure has. Right from the beginning, threw the ball downfield to Peerless Price. That was a 43-yard touchdown reception, victimizing Gerald Conaway. He's getting his first start. Then he pulls everybody on a bootleg and scores on a touchdown, so he does it throwing and running. And he continues. Now he gets Joey Kent involved in the action. Joey Kent from 11 yards out again against Conaway. And once again, Joey Kent on... A hot pattern in the face of a blitz, a good completion. Kent goes 67 yards for the touchdown. The other prominent junior in the equation, Darnell Autry, had a temperature of 102 degrees as the day started. And Autry, the other junior of prominence, who might also forego his final year, did well in the second quarter especially. Look at Manning. Putting up good numbers in the first half. Jeff Hall for Tennessee set to kick off. Kicking to Josh Barnes and Dave Beasley. Beasley at the 15. The -yard line. Weaving his way out to the 28-yard line. Tackled on the play by Fred White. Backup DB. First and 10 for Northwestern from their own 28-yard line. Well, they were down 21 in the first quarter, came back. They're down 10 here now to start the third quarter. Northwestern is. It's uh, kind of interesting, the ebb and flow of this football game. Nothing uh, short on the excitement side, but <laughs> certainly Northwestern, I think, got back, clawed into this game, tied it up, and their coach is disappointed in the way things turned right before the end of the half. And you have to wonder, you know, they had the six-week layoff, Mark. 
Tennessee only had the one month layoff. That, that means a difference in keeping the team sharp. Autry, his first carry on their first play, brought down at the 28-yard line. Brought down by Craig King. Now, a source close to the football program tells me that Autry is making plans to turn pro and forego his final year. And it's been much publicized that his father is putting a little bit of pressure on him to turn pro. Darnell Autry, just a junior, but certainly with a bright future. And he also has a future in the acting business. Second down and nine. Musso in motion, intended for Musso, and it's dropped at the 34. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys are visiting with Gary Barnett about the first half. He was, I was trying to think of a, an apt word. I think flabbergasted probably is appropriate with his defense. You know, he thought they were, he was really pleased offensively and was really pleased with the rally that his team exhibited. But defensively, he said they weren't tackling well. Fundamentally, they were not solid. Now, for the Tennessee Volunteers, obviously very happy offensively. They made a couple of defensive adjustments. And they have one player not playing in the second half, Mercedes Hamilton. That ankle you saw earlier when he went to the locker room, he will sit out the second half with a bad ankle. All right, thanks a lot, Dean. So first they get hit on the defensive line, now on the offensive line. Northwestern facing third down and nine. On their opening possession of the second half, Schnur under pressure and picked off. And Tennessee is going to take it into score. Tyrone Hines. And Schnur can't figure out what happened. Well, it's the old cardinal rule of playing quarterback. You don't throw the ball late out into the flat. He's trying to go to Darnell Autry out in the flat. Tyrone Hines, one-on-one -on -one coverage as a linebacker, undercuts that pattern. Get a good look at it right here as Hines gets a jump on the football. You can see how Autry was working away from it. There's a little high stepping. Doesn't quite get the unsportsmanlike penalty from high stepping into the end zone. And this is a very, very impressive performance now by the defense for Tennessee. A 30-yard return on the interception for the touchdown. Jeff Hall in for the extra point. An inauspicious beginning here in the second half for Northwestern. They throw a pick for a touchdown on the first possession. It's 38 to 21. Schnur figuring out what hit him. Look at Tyrone Hines, who put six on the board moments ago for Tennessee on that 30-yard interception return for a touchdown. Tennessee now leading 38-21. to 21. Just getting underway here in the third quarter. The CompUSA Florida Citrus Bowl. Jeff Hall, number four, kicking to David Beasley and Josh Barnes. Beasley, eight yards deep. He likes to take it on the 20. Well, on the interception, watch here. Darnell Autry is working an option route. He's going to take it to the outside. Schnur's looking downfield first. Now he throws and identifies who he wants to go to. But see how the ball, see how Autry's going back to the football. It's late and it's underthrown. Tyrone Hines undercuts him and goes 30 yards for the score. And they've been doing a bit of that this year, John Chavis and his defense. Today, 14 points off of two turnovers. Coming into this game, John, they had scored six touchdowns. There it is, six touchdowns on the season. So Northwestern comes out, tries to do it again. McGrew in motion, play pick on the waggle. Schnur bounce passes one out to the 30, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Darren Drexler. It'll be second down and 10. And the silence now from the Northwestern contingent has become deafening. Yeah, it seems like we're watching the first quarter all over again. Isn't sure it does. Where Wildcats look disorganized. They're not yeah. moving the football. And Steve Schnur is 10 for 22, 94 yards, two interceptions. Now, one was batted earlier, but this interception really hurts because it's for a touchdown. Real sharp student of the game, although he didn't demonstrate it on that last interception. Out of St. Louis, Missouri, a marketing major. He's do a little positioning with the product right here and puts it in the arms of Brian Musso, who's tackled by Tori Noel. 
short gain on the play of about four yards. Tory Noel's an interesting story. You know, against Florida, he played Sam linebacker. Against Mississippi, he played corner. He's a big hitter, natural strong safety. And Phil Fulmer told us the fact that he's so versatile will help him in the pros as a nickelback or whatever other things you can ask or demand of a defensive player. He suffered a neck injury in 94, missed a year with a bone transplant in his neck and a return to action. Good story. Great to see. Third down and eight for the Wildcats. Tennessee blitzing off the corner. It's complete out to the 28-yard line, but it's short of the first down. Joel Stewart made the reception. That's only his second reception of the year. Not exactly a primary target, but the coverage was so good downfield. Tyrone Hines playing himself a great football game in man-to-man -man coverage all over the football field. Hines before was isolated one-on-one -on -one with Darnell Autry. Here he's isolated one-on-one -on -one with Joel Stewart. See 47 playing his position. He knows what the down and distance is. He's not going to drive this thing too soon. But when he sees the ball thrown, he drives to it and prevents a first down. Great play by Hines. And he drove on Stewart, too, putting a nice hit on him. Burton with a great punt back to the 25. Terry Fair gains about six yards on the return after the 47-yard punt by number 14, Burton. case of burgeoning strength and physical conditioning started slow John but then picked it up yeah, he did he got stuck early in this football game things did not go real well for him then he burst through starts getting things going a little bit he wasn't expected to play here he scores on a two-yard pitch on an option play then he comes back on a little counter play goes 28 yards for the touchdown and breathe new life into this Wildcat team who was struggling up until that point and they need him again on offense when the Wildcats get the football back. Right now, the defense has got to play well on the field. Hey, he's changed his rags, too. He had a red rag on earlier. Maybe that's the key. From the red zone to the green zone. 38 to 21, Tennessee with the lead. Oh, Manning well. threw the out pattern a little early for his intended receiver, number 12, Marcus Nash, incomplete. Yeah, that's a little hand signal between quarterback and wide receiver. You see the receiver coach talking to his wide receiver on that play. Manning does a great job of getting that football and just flipping it out for a guy as big as he is. He's exceptionally quick at doing that. And when they see that nobody's on that slot or inside receiver, they just throw the football out there and get five yards or maybe more. Didn't happen that time. Nope. Peyton Manning from a very famous football family. Father Archie played 14 years in the NFL. His brother Cooper. Football player as well. Northwestern coming on the blitz. Manning found his receiver, but it was incomplete and dropped by Joey Kent. Gerald Conaway again being worked on. That ball was a little bit behind Joey Kent. Tough catch. Conaway out of Detroit. Getting the start today in place of Hudefi. You know, he does play a lot, though, in nickel situations. Hudefi would go into the slot. So Conway has had a lot of game experience, but not down after down after down like he has today. Smaley, the other corner suspended, the starter suspended because of drug use. This pass incomplete at the 45, and it'll be fourth down for Tennessee. Intended again for Kent. Yeah, see, see. Right now, Peyton Manning is talking to his tight end, Dustin Moore. He saw a problem there. Then he went downfield to Kent. I think he felt Kent should have settled in the zone instead kept, kept running across so a couple of incompletions here give Northwestern the football back and yeah, speaking of incompletions John Manning has missed his last five consecutive passes dating back to the last half Binion into punt that's Brian Musso he has three punts returned for touchdowns in his career this won't be one of them because Binion shanks it and it'll be marked right near midfield at the 49-yard line, just 20 on the punt. We'll be right back. And don't forget, coming up next, the Rose Bowl from Pasadena. Arizona State against Ohio State. Arizona State undefeated on the season. With a win against the Buckeyes, they can stake their claim, deservingly so, for the national title. 
12 34 to play in the third quarter Schnur picked off earlier in this quarter for a touchdown Darnell Autry moving his way across midfield down to the 48 yard line where he's tackled by Tyrone Hines that was the very same play that he scored a touchdown on a little counter play Tyrone Hines in all sorts of plays number 46 reads the play comes through and makes the hit I'm sorry number 47 but again he read that play it's the same thing they brought McGrew the fullback around on that counter tray he kind of plays like the right tackle on that as he comes around and makes the block Hines there to make the play look at Autry's numbers Musso in motion it's Musso underneath and he gets crunched at the 45 yard line Noel and Hines met him that's Mr. Hines that's just great scouting John Shavin's doing a great job telling this guy this is a play that Northwestern likes to run they bring some motion around watch Musso go back he's going to work underneath the tight end who's supposed to clear out uh-huh Hines is right there to make the play they've seen that on film too many times and Hines has he made every play in the second half I don't think there's any question right now as to who the defensive MVP of the game is so far for Tennessee it's number 47 third down and four for the Wildcats a trail 38 to 21 with nearly 11 minutes to play in the third period blitz coming by Tennessee Schnur gets it off to Bates complete at the 37 yard line and a first down for Northwestern a huge conversion for the Wildcats Hines and King in on the tackle. Dwayne Bates, nice big target, John, as you mentioned earlier. At 6'2", 211 pounds from Aiken, South Carolina. He's made six catches this afternoon for a total of 58 yards. Well, Every lost in the Rose Bowl last year, Mark, was, of course, Keyshawn Johnson at 12 catches for 216. Bates had seven for 145. That was his biggest game up until that point. And that's where he felt he came of age as a wide receiver. Autry in motion. Like they throw here. He's a former quarterback. They throw it back. <laughs> and it's almost picked up a flag on the play. Jonathan Brown came in and blew the play up. Talked about Bates being a former quarterback. I don't think he gave a good enough look downfield. And of course, it's ineligible receiver because he hit Brian Cardos's split tackle right in the shoulder pad. This is the part of the field where you like to take some gambles and try some trickery offensively, but uh, this thing does not look good at all. Touching of a forward pass, number 78 on the offense, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, loss it down, second down. I guess they can throw that one out of the book. Yeah, and Brian Cardos is saying, why me? <laughs> why? I'm just trying to block. It just got in the way. Now, there's no backs in the backfield right now. Dwayne Bates gets the ball. He was a quarterback in high school. He's thrown some passes in his career. But he goes back across to Steve Schnur, who I think was, you know, really a secondary target on that play. I think he had an opportunity last down. He threw a 23-yard touchdown pass to Drexler, the tight end against Iowa this year. So they've used this kind of play before. Well, after that, it's second and 15. Schnur completes it down to the 32 yard line that's Beasley making the reception picking up 10 yards so it'll be third down and about five to go for Northwestern who trail 38 to 21 with 10 10 to play in the third period boy seven to five look at that score hockey game yeah you can't Pull the goalie <laughs> BYU and involved in this in a, in a game in single digits five points Look at Northwestern in third down situations today. Just four of 11. Three receiver set on third and five. Schnur going for Musso who makes the grab. Complete and now incomplete at the 12. Waved off late. Corey Gaines put the hit on Musso. Yeah, I think Corey Gaines not only got the hit in, but he kind of got his arm in there was able to pull that ball away and Musso showing great athleticism going up high to make the catch but watch Gaines as he drives the ball and I thought a catch initially he's got to get his foot down and get control see how he got his arm right through there and just pulled the thing out great play by Corey Gaines and from our angle we couldn't see him drop the ball either 
Again, Musso kind of in between short and deep coverage. Terrific job going up, but see how Gaines comes through and strips that football. An excellent job by Corey Gaines, but again, Northwestern's going to go for it on fourth down, Mark. Fourth and five. They already did it once today. Schnur has time, completes it at the 25, and a first down. Steve Schnur stood in the pocket, poised, and delivered a strike to Musso, who was working on Noel. Yeah, Musso was there a long time before Schnur made the decision to throw to him. I don't know if he was looking for a better throwing lane or what, but I saw him open early. Musso getting busy today, getting his catch on. Six receptions for 40 yards. One more look. Yeah, quickly we'll see Schnur drop back. He's surveying the field. Now watch Musso flash across here, number 22. Right there he's open, but see, Schnur can't see him. He's only six feet tall. Finally sees him and delivers it for a first down. It's Musso again. And he fumbles it. He put it on the ground, and Tennessee has the ball. Al Wilson, number 27, pounces on the loose pill. And a potential scoring drive and threat is snuck at the 10-yard line. The third turnover of the day for Northwestern. It's a real shame because they're getting back into the football game here in the second half. Down substantially in this game right now. A good play. Musso waits patiently. Now watch how he's holding the ball in traffic. He needs to have his hand over the nose of that football. Big hit right in there on the hip. That was Jason Parker who delivered the hit. And Al Wilson makes the recovery. So it's a turnover for Northwestern just as they're driving the football and starting to get back into this game. 907 to play in the third quarter. Manning hands off to his tailback, Graham. Graham stopped up. At about the 12-yard line by Tim Sharp, number 52. And don't forget, tomorrow, it's the Nokia Sugar Bowl featuring Florida and Florida State at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on ABC. Steve Spurrier, the Florida head coach, John, sending or putting together videotape of the hits, allegedly late hits, on his quarterback, Danny Werfels. Yeah, he's either trying to influence the officials or he's trying to drum up excitement for the football game. Not that the game needed any extra hype. Here's Graham again. Providing some hype on a nice run. Flag down. Graham down at the 23-yard line. Barnes pushing him out of bounds after the 11-yard pickup. But I, I think in regards to the Nokia Sugar Bowl, you know, a lot of people are scratching their heads, probably most particularly Bobby Bowden, as to what the motivation is for Steve Spurrier and the rampage he's gone on in terms of talking about the hits. I mean, you know, quarterbacks are going to get hit. If you run an aggressive defense, they'll get hit. And, of course, Steve Spurrier doesn't do a great job of protecting his quarterback. One more look at that run by Graham. It'll come back, the penalty against Tennessee right there. Yeah, there's a push in the back is what they called on that play. Gardner, Barry Gardner, number 55, was the one who got pushed in the back. There's a look at Jay Graham. Turf toe and hamstring injuries slowed him down a little earlier this year. Kind of reminds you I'm on green a little bit in Nebraska and never really got on track. You brought, brought up a good point earlier this season. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a first. When you said that they've got to rename that injury. Turf toe sounds like, like a hangnail, yeah, but cool. it's much more painful if you've ever had it. Yeah, it sounds like a, like a happy injury, doesn't it? <laughs> Turf toe? Like a dancer's injury or something like that. It's so painful because your big toe is what you push off of when you run. And it's, when it's bruised, you have that ligament problem in there. It renders you ineffective. Spoken like a true tight end who's had one or two. Second down and 14. Out of the end zone, Manning complete to Eric Lane. He's piled up at the 12-yard line. The charge led by Josh Barnes, number 17. 8-10 remaining in the third quarter. Northwestern still trailing by 17 points. And moments ago, Brian Musso fumbling, killing their scoring drive. Look at Barnes from Aurora, Colorado. A true sophomore. First year starter. Has three interceptions, which is tops on the team. And they all came in the final games of the year against Wisconsin, Penn State, and Iowa. Third and seven for Peyton Manning in Tennessee. Pumps once, completes the pass. Out to the 24-yard line, a first down for the Volunteers. Dustin Moore making the catch. The big target, the tight end, working on Gardner. Dustin Moore, 
just a sophomore, is quite an athletic specimen. He started out playing on the defensive side of the football. As a matter of fact, he took some reps this week because that defensive line is so beat up. He's a guy that couldn't play on the defensive line if a couple people went down because of injury or because of the heat today. It's like you keep telling me, tight ends are the best athletes on the field. Yeah, right? put them anywhere. That's right. They'll help you. Here's Graham lunging forward over the 25 out to the 26-yard line. Keith Lozowski making the tackle for Northwestern. Graham, MVP of the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl last season. And Pat Fitzgerald keeping active in the middle for Northwestern. Yeah, what I love about him is his footwork and his recognition. He's always square. He's always, yeah, he's square to the blockers, square to the line of scrimmage on the running plays. He kind of reminds me of Zach Thomas, who came out of Texas Tech, and is doing such a great job. A little bit undersized, but he makes up for it in what he knows about football. Second and eight, Manning a strike at the 39-yard line to Joey Kent, a man who's registered back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons and racks up 13 more yards right here. He was working on the other number 11, the cornerback Gerald Conway. Kent now five receptions this afternoon for a total of 123 yards. His back to back thousand yard seasons are first in the SEC. At one point this year, he had eight consecutive games of 100 yards receiving or more. One defeat in that conference. Manning, 20 of 29 so far. Six and a half minutes to play in the period. Manning complete out of the backfield. Graham lunges forward and has the first down at midfield picking up 11 Conway making the tackle along with Gardner you know this is such an easy completion for Manning because he's six feet five inches tall he can survey the field but I love the way he just throws this short pass back. I mean you can hit it back right in a run like that I mean that's like a handoff he doesn't have to think about catching the football he can get his shoulder squares and get up the field and that you know, to me, when you have a tall quarterback, and this is what makes him such a hot prospect, if he does indeed decide to come out of college, that he can survey the field and throw that kind of football, and that kind of pass right there can do an awful lot for an offense. You can see a lot when you're 6'5", and to put it on the ground. Who's got it? Northwestern does. The Volunteers give it back. That's the second exchange problem we saw today between Trey Teague, the center, Peyton Manning. Keep in mind, Trey Teague started the first eight games at left tackle. He's only fourth time playing center. Keith Wazowski, number 44, right there, recovered the fumble for Northwestern. They're down 16 points in familiar position. What else is new? We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Comp U.S. Citrus Bowl here in Orlando, Tennessee, winning 38 to 21. Dean Blevins from the sideline reporting again. And, you know, both of these schools, Northwestern and Tennessee, are doing very, very well. Financially, they're doing well. Academically, they're doing well. They're doing well in terms of being stocked with players. And, guys, both recruiting classes are going extremely, uh, the, the recruiting process is going very, very well. Gary Barnett tells us that uh, of his 21 scholarships available this year, 18 are already committed. More on that after this play. All right, Dean Schnur back to pass on first and ten. Bates complete his forward progress mark right near midfield, working on Terry Fair. Dean? Well, Mark, he's excited about the future of the program because he said, you know, he sold the kids two or three years ago, or four years ago, rather, that the program would get there someday and that they would be the guys to get it there. Well, that happened for him, and now they're selling the place out every week. Of course, they sell the place out in Knoxville as well. 105,000 the average there. They do very, very well nationally recruiting. 48 of their 73 players are from out of state, and they have things rolling at Tennessee as well. Yeah, when you draw 105 plus, that's a lot of revenue. Build a lot of weight rooms that way. This is Darnell Autry. Did a lot of extra work in the weight room over the summer. Put on about 10 pounds. Fair making the tackle on the play. Northwestern with back-to-back -back nine win seasons. Back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time since 70-71. Gary Barnett, back-to-back -back coaching honors, and Pat Fitzgerald also with some individual honors. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. He won the Chuck Bednarik Award, Bronco Nagurski Award. Finished second in the Butkus balloting. And, you know, keep in mind Fitzgerald, for him, this is his first bowl game of his career. He was hurt at the end of last regular season, didn't play in the Rose Bowl, so this game means a lot to him today. 
and his some uh, 35 family members that made the trip down here to Orlando. That much shy of the first down. It'll be third down and that much to go. There's a look at Fitzgerald. Had an opportunity to meet his sister Jackie, his mother Flo, and his dad Pat Sr. His sister and girlfriend uh, surprised him actually. Flew to Orlando for the Butkus presentation at Disney World. And he came in second, of course, to Matt Russell. But you can always find the Fitzgerald fans at Dyke Stadium in Evanston <laughs> under the Wisconsin banner, I'm told, <laughs> where they have the best tailgate parties in the world. That's real nice, Mark. You just told the third largest city in the world where they can get some free food during a tailgate party. And I'll be there. Third and one, Autry. Little food for thought on the first down. They spotted at the 41-yard line, Tyrone Hines making the tackle on the play. Is this Darnell Autry's last game at Northwestern? The junior contemplating his future at Northwestern or perhaps in the NFL. 5.15 to play in the third quarter. You know, one of the things you do when you are a junior is you have the opportunity to talk to scouts and get an idea of where it is you might fit in in the draft. And for Darnell Autry, he's been told he'd be a late first-round draft choice, maybe an early second-round draft choice. And I don't know if he can improve on that standing all that much by playing another year. Here he is on the counter. And he is stopped up at the 40-yard line. Tyrone Hines is like TNT in the middle. He is blowing people up. If there's one man that can make a statement during the course of the game right now, or has made a statement, it's Tyrone Hines. He was a Prop 48 candidate in his first year, so he didn't play. He started his sophomore year, but he was hurt last year, played at about 75%, didn't make the kind of plays he wanted to. He and Filmer got together. Look at that. I mean, that is just form tackling. Textbook. Nine tackles in this football game. I bet half of those right now are in the third quarter. And his wristbands, he has a personal message from his mom, Annie Ruth Hines. It says, do what you know you can do, and he's doing it well. Schnur complete to Bates over the middle of the 36-yard line. He was working on Torrey Noel with 4.01 to play in the period, the third period. Musso checking into the game now along with McGrew. Waterman checking out. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. Tennessee leads Northwestern 38 to 21 in the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. We're in the third quarter, 332 to play. Tennessee jumped out to a 21-0 lead before Northwestern came back to tie. And Steve Schnur is going to have the first down scampering out of bounds at the 23-yard line, picking up 12 on that play. All the activity downfield was to his right side, and he surveyed the field. He had a lot of time. Offensive line did a real good job protecting him on that play. Steve Schnur looked downfield and realized he had some running room, room and took off. One more look at the senior playing his last game at Northwestern. Yeah, good. You see Cardis on the right side, 78 helping out. Good protection by the tight end, 83 there, Darren Drexler. And then he just looks upfield and says, boy, I've got some room. But you know who's going to be there first, right there, Tyrone Hines all over the football field today. Big day of college football, the Rose Bowl, coming up next on ABC, Ohio State and Arizona State. Nur has time to throw, and it may have been batted near the line of scrimmage. And Schnur ends up on his wallet at the 30-yard line. You know, Schnur's a tough kid. He was recruited. He, after the 94 season, he and Gary Barnett kind of had it out. Uh, he, Barnett brought in Tim Hughes. He was a J.C. transfer quarterback. And Schnur said to him, you know, I lost trust in you. You bring somebody in, I lost faith in you. And Barnett said, well, I kind of lost faith in you as well. He gets the ball batted down here at the line of scrimmage. And Barnett said he kicked it around, thought about it, went for a jog, came back and said, you know what, you're right. You see the ball get knocked around there. And right there, Drexler claims he was hit, but once the ball's batted, you can't have any kind of pass interference. Barnett gave him the start after that point. And it was kind of interesting because Schnur, you know, really went at it with the head coach. And Barnett said, I changed my mind. I was wrong. It's worked out to both their advantage. Try the snap. Full start. Number five on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. 
John, they seemed a little confused from the beginning of that, Northwestern did. Fulmer still pacing the sidelines for Tennessee. Recently had his contract extended at Tennessee. Says, uh, told me that he hasn't gone out and bought anything new yet, John. He's too busy recruiting. Yeah, it's extended one year through the year 2001. Certainly he's not happy about the penalty situation. This team penalized 12 times for 113 yards. Schnurr backing up and brought down the third sack of the day for the Tennessee Volunteer defense. Duff, along with Corey Terry, number 22, went on the tackle, a loss of 14, and that really, really hurts. Yeah, Corey Taylor, Taylor, I'm sorry, Terry, number 22. This guy's really come on at this point in the season. He's going to come from the right side here and get pressure downfield, as is Duff coming from the inside here. But I think here, you know, certainly Schnur's got to realize what's going on downfield and make an effort to get rid of the football. But you can see just from looking downfield, there wasn't a whole lot of places to throw it to, and I'm certain he didn't want to risk a grounding penalty. Third down and 29 to go. They've got to get to the 14-yard line. Schnur drills it. Over the middle, Perfect. no flag on the play. The second big play by Corey Gay, excuse me, Mark, but that's the second time today he's jarred the ball loose. Once, of course, from pulling onto somebody's hand, that was Brian Musso, this time just on a well-timed hit. He got there just as the ball arrived. One more look at the intended pass for Beasley. Yeah, Beasley does a good job of settling in that zone. Could have helped himself maybe coming back to the football a little bit. But Corey Games comes right through. And that, when you can time a hit like that, that's great play by the nickelback, Corey Games. This secondary led the SEC in passing defense. Burton into punt. Standing on his own 43-yard line. And he hangs it up. Bounces at the 8, but comes back out. Takes a Tennessee bounce out to the 12. Let's check in with John Saunders in New Orleans. All right, Mark, thanks a lot. Time once again for the Merrill Lynch Bowl Report here at the Louisiana Superdome, site of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. That is tomorrow, the game that will decide the national championship. Now, coming up after the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, it's the Rose Bowl, and this one also will have a say in the national title. Todd Blackledge, Jake Plummer, terrific quarterback. Yeah, I love Jake Plummer. I thought he was the best player in college football, a great leader, and he's a guy that did the rest of that team, they'll run through a wall for Jake Plummer. Great yeah. guy to have on the field against a very good Ohio State defense. Let's update a score that has gone final now in the Gator Bowl. North Carolina, the Tar Heels come off with a victory against West Virginia. Right now, let's get back to Mark. All right, thanks a lot, guys. And enjoy your Cajun food down there. I know you will. This pass incomplete. Intended for Peerless Price, who already has a touchdown today. Receiving. 2.04 to play in the third quarter as Tennessee leads Northwestern 38-21 to in the first meeting ever between these two institutions. You know, I agree with Todd Blackledge in his assessment of Jake Plummer. I thought he was the best player in college this year. And, you know, the Heisman, that you can give it a lot of different definitions. Danny Werfel, of course, won the Heisman this year. But uh, Jake Plummer, in my eyes, did more for his team than any other player in college football. This is Jake Graham out to the 20-yard line. Well, the Anderson Consulting World Championship of Golf is a year-long event that features many of the world's finest golfers in match play competition. That's Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern time, 1 o'clock Pacific time on ABC. The winner gets $1 million. The ball at the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and three to go for Peyton Manning and Tennessee's offense. Sharp coming out of the game. Leary coming in. They run it, and they won't have the first down. Stuffed up nicely by Fitzgerald and Joe Reef on the play. Reef, a fifth-year player, a four-year letterman. And that guy, number 51, Fitzgerald. The human stop sign. Yeah, I think with third and four to go, Pretty obvious passing situation. 
Tennessee with, with, with one back attack, three wide receivers on the right side. You can see Trey Teague, number 70, tries to get to Fitzgerald. He's not able to get around to him. But Reef, of course, made the tackle on that play, reading the running play well and stopping Tennessee. Uso back at the 33. Uso brought down at the 37. 48 yards on the punt, five on the return, and a man that draws the line. He defines the boundaries and dares others to cross. Pat Fitzgerald, star linebacker for Northwestern, the two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. You know, yeah, he's a great player. And I asked him about Tennessee. You know, I said, Have you, you've been through a lot of teams in the Big Ten. How would he put Tennessee? He said, I've never seen speed like this. Never seen any team like Tennessee that I haven't played against in my career. So it shows a little bit about the differences between the Big Ten and the SEC as conferences and what offenses do in each respective conference. It's Gerald taking a breather. The offense on the field for Northwestern. Three seconds, seconds to play in the third period. Out to the 43-yard line, picking up about five on the play. That's Darnell Autry, not Adrian. Hines in on the tackle once again for Tennessee. He's having an outstanding day, is Tyrone Hines. Autry, meanwhile, 15 rushes this afternoon for a total of 53 yards. Not bad for a guy who was playing with a flu and a temperature of close to 102 degrees earlier today. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. 50 minutes to go. We'll return with more action between Tennessee and Northwestern after this message and a word from our ABC station. The score is 38 to 21. This live view is courtesy of the Bud One Airship, which has been seen by millions on its ongoing Goodwill tour. This Bud's for you. Give us a thumbs up, guys, if you hear us. There you go. He did, right? Yes, he did. He's got that window open, his elbow <laughs> out. <laughs> Second and four for Northwestern. Musso complete. Hangs on to it this time. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Big story of the defense today, Dean. Well, it is, and Leonard Little is a guy who wishes he were out there, and Leonard is a junior here at Tennessee and is out for the year with a, an MCL and an ACL torn up on your right knee. How's it coming along? No, rehab's coming along fine. You know, Mike Rolo and Dr. Yamas them is working with me real well, and I should be back, you know, by the spring, but I don't know if I'm going to practice or not. Well, this is a guy, guys, that had he been healthy, uh, he would have had a tough decision to make about whether to come out this year or not and would have probably been a first-round selection. Here, Mark, we'll come back in a second. All right. Thanks a lot, Dean. Uh, first and ten. And so far, the understudies on the defensive front doing pretty well. Schnur going up top. He got hit as he released it, and he's picked up. Terry Fair with another pinch. Yeah, Terry Fair with inside-outside coverage on Dwayne Bates. Terry Fair drove that football. That's his fifth interception. This year he had four coming into this football game. First of all, Schnur, under a lot of pressure, tries to get the ball downfield. Jonathan Brown, number 91, comes right through and hits him. There it is, the tail end of the hit on Schnur. Now watch his coverage from the inside, coverage from the outside. Fair makes that play, and Bates had trouble finding the football in the air. The fourth turnover, third interception for Schnur today. We'll be back. Steve Schnur has thrown three interceptions today, and Johnny's smiling after that last one. Can't figure it out. Well, he's talking right there to Craig Johnson, his quarterback coach. And you know, I think uh, I don't know if it's a smile so much of what happened, but just his reaction and the way he's trying to handle that adversity. Maybe one of those relaxation techniques. Yeah, that could be it. Well, if that's the case, he's suffering from premature relaxation. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Well, Mark, this guy's good enough that he only played six games before tearing up his knee. He still made all SEC, so you're getting credit. You don't believe your your team's getting national credit, though, do you? Uh, you no, know, week by week, we got to come out and um, prove ourselves every week. Just like Northwest and Coach Barnett gave us a challenge yesterday. They said it was going to come down and, you know, beat us and stuff. He said that they ain't flying 2,000 miles from nothing. Uh, you see who's winning now, so <laughs> we always got to prove ourselves every week in and week out. All right, thanks. And uh, he's trying to get a little few more votes for Tennessee. <laughs> 
All right, and here's Graham. Candidate for offensive MVP today. Speaking of votes, Graham tripped up at the 28-yard line by Barry Gardner. Graham, total of 69 yards today on 13 rushes. Talked about the votes. Tennessee at number nine in the AP poll. Northwestern at number 11. And don't forget, you'll see number one against number three in the Nokia Sugar Bowl tomorrow at 8 Eastern time on ABC. And Arizona State, number two, will be coming up next from Pasadena in the Rose Bowl against Ohio State. That's Eric Lane getting about two yards, running off tackle over the right side, brought down by DeBose. Clock running with 13.26 to play in the fourth quarter. Tennessee leading 38-21. to 17-point disadvantage for Northwestern, but keep in mind, they trailed Michigan by 16 points in the fourth quarter and came back to win that game. Right about now is where they had a turnover defensively. About 12 minutes left in that game. They started to turn things around and created some turnovers. They need some more here today. Few turnover, but Manning isn't going to give it up. Complete to Peerless Price, number 37, who picks up 16 more yards of real estate with that catch and another Tennessee first down. The one thing about Tennessee, if they can run the football, they can effectively end this football game. And they're a team that has not run the ball consistently this year. Six of their games, they were under 100 yards rushing. They averaged only 126 yards a game, so it's not exactly their strong suit. 22 for 76 in this game so far. Manning going the distance at quarterback. A sidestep in the line of scrimmage. That's Graham again. Brought down by Mike Nelson. The free safety number 26. Today's official attendance. 63,467. Does that include the Grinch and the cat in a hat and green eggs and ham and everything else we oh, saw? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sam, I am. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Oh, great halftime festivities. Second down and four. Backs out of the eye. With 11.58 to play in the fourth quarter. Mark Levine, the backup tailback to Jay Graham, gets the carry. Picks up a couple of yards. Sunday night, Lois and Clark. John, are they still married? Yeah, I think so. And yeah. a rough time, you know. They moved to a brand new time, 7 o'clock, 6 central, with a brand new episode, followed by America's Funniest Home Videos. Then Jack Wagner stars in the world premiere movie event, Echo, on the Sunday night movie. The weekend's best, Sunday, on ABC. Never miss an episode of Lois and Clark. Good to see them make it through that rough time, though. I think that happens with everybody, even a superhuman, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is Levine. Out to the 40-yard line. Be about five yards short of the first down. Gardner making the tackle on the play. I am impressed. I mean, certainly Northwestern knows they're going to run the football, and yet they're not able to stop Tennessee on this drive. A very impressive drive by Tennessee so far. Pounding that football in there, using a variety of backs keeping the chains moving, and more importantly, taking some real critical time off the clock. And I know Phil Fulmer would like this offense to be more like that next year, no matter who the quarterback is. Philip Fulmer, uh, the former offensive coordinator at Tennessee, presently the head coach. Little waggle action, and the pass is dropped by John Sartell. Sartell's a guy who doesn't catch many passes. Next on ABC, for Ohio State and Arizona State, number two coming up. But Sartell is a guy who doesn't get that many passes, and he's actually hanging around so he can tutor Dustin Moore. He's played. He actually changed his major. He was pre-med. Now he's finance. Not a bad combination, being yeah. a doctor and a stockbroker. Sure. Fulmer says uh, that someday Sartell will probably end up running some big corporation. Got a lot on the ball. Third down and six. Manning audibling at the line. Northwestern blitzing. Manning eludes the rush and fires a dart complete down to the 25-yard line. Nash making the catch. That is the savvy and moxie in the pocket that has become the signature of Peyton Manning. And if you want to talk about it from the other side, Gary Barnett said we're not making plays defensively. 
He talked about that. The blitz gets through. It's the right defense that's called. Right there, looks like Sharp, number 52, comes through. Gets a hand on Manning, but he can't get him down on the ground. Manning completes the pass to Marcus, Marcus Nash for the first down. And again, this drive stays alive. Tennessee doing a real good job of taking time off that clock. Four wide receivers out on this set. Manning, 24 of 35, 373 yards. And he added some more to the total if it stands. Flags down on the play back at the 27-yard line. The pass complete to Peerless Price. A lot of times when you have a formation with no backs in the backfield, sometimes you have a problem with an illegal formation. See if there were seven men on the line of scrimmage or not. That might be the call right there. And there's the call from our official. Heads down for the second consecutive year in bowl games for Northwestern. Last year, of course, they hung their heads after losing to USC, although they did play well in that game, represented themselves well. Never fun when you lose, though. <laughs> the, the call by the referee, Bill McCabe, six men on the line of scrimmage, 12 men against the defense, so both sides have a little problem lining up on that play. We'll play the down over again. It'll be first down and 10. Manning. Three years ago, forego attending Ole Miss. His father's alma mater attending Tennessee instead. They give it to Levine. Levine picks up about two or three on the play. Tor Schmidt, number 90, making the tackle for Northwestern. Coaches high on him at the start of the year. Very competitive youngster. And I met his mother. She was born in Trinidad, lives in California. She is a very feisty and glib woman. A Julia. real treat to be here. She was fun. Trinidad, and then when she found out you had some Jamaican heritage, she kind of shook her head. You <laughs> learned about the West Indian culture and some of the clashes there. That was a great conversation. What a wonderful lady. Second down and nine. And a wonderful quarterback and wonderful receiver combination. Manning to Nash. Out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Sweet music on the field for Tennessee. Number 12 picking up 17 yards. Mike Nelson, number 26, finally making the tackle. Another first down with 9.16 to play in the fourth quarter. You get the feeling that Northwestern's defense now, John, is just wearing down. They've been on the field for a long time today. Especially with the offense sputtering in the second half. That's exactly right. And that was the game plan all along for Phil Fulmer and this Tennessee offense was to spread the offense out, throw the football over the field, make the Wildcats defend the entire football field. And by, by and large, they've been doing that most of the day today as Manning has thrown for 390 yards. With the meter still running, this is Levine, the backup tailback in the game now for Jay Graham picking up two yards. That was the 12th play of the current drive for Tennessee. Fitzgerald making the tackle on the last play. There's a look at the winner of the Nagurski and Bednarik Awards. Two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year winner. He's recovered 100% from that leg injury that he suffered last year, which forced him to miss the Rose Bowl. And speaking of Rose Bowls, coming up next, Ohio State against Arizona State. Arizona State undefeated on the season. Chance for the national championship for them. Here's Manning. Brought down at the 12-yard line by Joe Reef. Reef brings him down at the 12. It'll be third down for Tennessee. You know, Manning didn't want to force the issue on that play, Mark. It was real clear that if he was going to try and throw the football, it wasn't going to be a wide-open situation. The last thing he wants to do is turn the football over and get Northwestern in this game down 17 points with eight minutes left now. And John Sharp comes out of the game. In comes Leary. Four receivers, trips left for Tennessee. Levine the single back. Northwestern blitz on the timing pattern into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for double eight. Andy McCullough. And it'll be fourth down for Tennessee. And in comes the field goal unit. 
Gerald Conway, who's been picked on time and again, defending on the play. In comes Hall for the field goal attempt. That time, Conway did a great job bumping McCullough long enough so that he couldn't get downfield and go up and make the catch. That jam at the line of scrimmage throws off the timing of those fade patterns, the kind of things you try and do down around the end zone. Jeff Hall attempting this field goal from 28 yards out. He's already made one today from 19. And he drills that one through two. Tennessee now leads 41 to 21. It's been all orange today. We'll be right back. Back in the fourth quarter in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl. The Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl this year's edition led by Tennessee so far, 41 to 21. All set to kick off. And back deep, Beasley and Barnes. Northwestern searching for a miracle here. Beasley at the goal line. Stopped in his tracks at the 24-yard line. Coming up next, the Rose Bowl on ABC. Let's go out to Brett Musburger in Pasadena. Well, Mark, Happy New Year to you. Here in Pasadena is where the real deal begins. The Rose Bowl, one of two bowl games that will determine the national champion. Arizona State thinking large, and speaking of large, Ohio State features this fella. 330-pound Orlando Pace on the offensive line. Look at who he's matched against. Derrick Rogers weighs only 212. You'd say a mismatch. Folks, don't ever count out the good small man. Back to Mark. I don't know, Brent. I like the good big man. <laughs> <laughs> and this one almost picked off by number 47, Tyrone Hines. Orlando Pace is an incredible lineman. And don't forget, coming up next, in just a few moments, Ohio State number four against undefeated and ranked number two in the nation, Arizona State Sun Devils. Rose Bowl next on ABC. I don't think I've ever seen a big guy with the athletic ability and talent of Orlando Pace. He's so light on his feet. No, he just dominated all year. And, and you know, equally well, sometimes you get great tackles if you run block real well, they get a lot of publicity. He pass blocks as well as anybody that's ever played college football. Now, I've seen video of him, John, slam dunking a basketball. You know, at his size and weight, that's pretty good. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> that's Might good. break a couple backboards, though. <laughs> Might be a problem. How's his foul shooting? Does he do better than the Shaq? <laughs> Corey Terry making the last tackle that time. Darnell Autry on the run. Seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. We were tied at 21 at one point. In the second quarter, Tennessee scored 10 consecutive points to take a 10-point lead going into the locker room at halftime. And then Steve Schnurr threw that interception early in the third quarter on their opening drive that went the other way for a touchdown. It's been Tennessee ever since. Third and eight. Autry out of the backfield, complete, out to the 32-yard line. And the question still begs at this juncture. And I would see if Schnurr is getting up awfully slowly. He yeah. took quite a hit on that play. The question still begging whether Darnell Autry will actually come out and forego his final year of eligibility. It's been a much talked about topic. Steve Schnurr, not you realize he's not in a situation that Northwestern's accustomed to. They're not really a kind of team that can just drop back and throw play after play after play. There he is getting hit from both sides right there. Lastly, from Jonathan Brown. Fourth and two, John. They're going for it on fourth down. No choice, actually. They've converted twice in fourth down situations and make that three for three. A quick slant. Wayne Bates out at the 39-yard line. Brought down by Goodrich. Well, it's important to get the first down, but with 543 left right now in this football game, down 20 points they had to convert it there so they did but they you know they've got to start throwing the ball in 20 and 30 yard chunks if they can it was a bad sign for Northwestern when they won the squeeze off that they have annually here at the comp <laughs> USA Florida Citrus Bowl I'll explain after this play the pass incomplete out of the backfield there's some sort of Gooch. friend there or? well what happens John is more often than not the team that wins the squeeze off ends up losing the football game and this year Northwestern won the squeeze off where they take some oranges and grapefruit and 
squeeze them and collectively count how many ounces of juice each team has at the end. And Northwestern set a record for the number of ounces of juice. And uh, although there were some claims of maybe some cheating yeah, coming from I, the other I, side. Yeah, I thought I heard that. <laughs> These guys want to win at anything and everything. Schmerer going downtown for Bates. And he overthrows his receiver at the 20-yard line incomplete. You know, what's interesting about these teams is, you know, how they've gotten where they are today. Tennessee with a rich tradition. Bull burst, Tennessee, 1947 in the orange. Northwestern, 49 in the rose. Now, look at that. Since then, no bowl appearances for Tennessee. 30 bowl appearances, and now they have bowl appearances the last two years. It's only the third bowl wow. for Northwestern in their entire history. Two of those coming last year and this year. 37 total for Tennessee. 49 to 95 for Northwestern without a bowl appearance. That's a long time between drinks of water. 520 to play. Tennessee leading by 20. Schmerer passes for Musso about a yard short. Yeah, I think right now they have to try and get Schnur rolled out to the right side. Get him away from the pocket. Try to get him a little bit more room where he can see downfield and, and just take a shot on fourth down. One of Schnur's favorite targets today has been Brian Musso. Musso, part of a great football family. With Johnny Musso, number 22 at Alabama. Brian says his favorite class is uh, the one that gets canceled. <laughs> Imagine that. Third and three. Musso out on the pattern. Schnur looking for him. And it's Musso time complete for the first down at the 43. And let's hear from Dad with Dean. All right, guys. Here with Johnny Musso, the Italian stallion, the former Alabama All-American. That was his son, Brian, there on the catch. And Johnny, what do you think about that boy? Well, he's a great kid. Got, got a lot of talent. I uh, hope he has a lot more of those. I don't know how many he can get in five minutes, but I hope he has a few more of those coming. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, I thought I was done seeing Peyton. Oh. I thought I was done watching Manning's uh, field air with touchdown passes, though. This is getting uh, getting old. Well, we remember, my age at least, remembers the names Musso and Manning, but it was you and, of course, Archie. It's great to have kids, though, coming along and doing pretty well. And I met Peyton uh, at a restaurant the other night. He's a fine young man. Our two kids have one thing in common. They got their good looks from their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> and we should say, Scott, your other son, is on scholarship he's as well. He's out there. He's doing a good job. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> right. Here's Autry, close to the first down. Let's check in with John Saunders in Cajun country. Indeed, Mark, it's time for the Maryland Bowl Report. Coming up next, it's the Rose Bowl. And Todd Blackledge, John Cooper against his former team. Yeah, kind of ironic. The last coach to take Arizona State to the Rose Bowl before this year was John Cooper. Left there. Part of the reason to go somewhere, have a better chance to win a national championship. Here are the Sun Devils, poised on the verge of a possible national championship. Bruce Snyder's team is ranked number two in the nation. He wins today, then he waits to find out what happens here tomorrow in the Sugar Bowl. Right now, back to you. All right, that game, of course, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. First and 10. Bates, touchdown Northwestern. Dwayne Bates, 22 yards on the strike. Play they've been trying to hit all day long to Bates. He's been in coverage most of the day. He worked one-on-one -on -one with another Dwayne, Dwayne Goodrich. But again, it's been difficult for the Wildcats today. Bates is you know, really their only go-to guy deep. Musso's made a lot of plays underneath. He has 10 catches now for 96 yards in this game. He locates the football before Goodrich, comes back, makes a good play, and makes it into the end zone with some pretty adept footwork. Goins in for the extra point attempt. Knocks it through, and now they trail by 13. Hey, if you've seen their game against Wisconsin or against Michigan, you know what can happen with Northwestern. Stick around. We'll be right back. Ready for an onside kick, Mark. Worked earlier in the football game. It was somewhat of a surprise. It's going to be no surprise here as Tennessee has their hands unit on the football field. Their receivers, people with the best hands on the team. 
Oh, they fake it with a different kicker. It hit a Northwestern player. And it won't matter if Northwestern recovers. Oh, my goodness. Not Rick. sure. But I have never seen that wrinkle on an onside kick. <laughs> it might have had somebody off sides, though. Well, I think it hit a Northwestern player, John. There's a flag down at the 35-yard line. What a great idea. Boy, you fake the kicker going one way, come back the other way, and somebody <laughs> else kicks the ball. It's against the Wildcats. Now let's see if the kicker, the kicker might have been offsides. Boy, it's an ineligible person downfield. Coach Barnett ball there. with all kinds of tricks today. I don't know why it's not just an offside though. Why it... I thought it hit somebody. Well, here's a call. Yep. Phil McHale straightened it out for us. Don't forget, coming up next, it's the Rose Bowl on ABC. Ohio State against Arizona State. John Cooper coaching against his former team. So you probably have an illegal touch before 10 yards. by the kicking team. That penalty is declined. We have illegal touching by the kicking team. So the ball be put in play where the ball was illegally touched. First down. Well, they get an A for effort, maybe not an execution. Goins comes over to kick the ball. Let's take a look at it. Goins comes over to kick the ball. Now he fakes the kick. And who comes over? His number 39 comes over. Shannon Jones, who's the backup kicker. And he bounced it off the helmet of Barry Gardner. Right. And that's why it was called an illegal touch. But you know, I like that. I mean, nobody's going to know the numbers of the kickoff team. And who's who? A little fake there. There's the kick. Oh, yep. Bounces off Barry Gardner. You're exactly right off his helmet. Illegal touch. And Tennessee has the football. Manning, quick three-step drop. Fires a strike to Price. Fearless Price getting the first down for the Volunteers. Still intense. Still giving 100% is Peerless Price. 14 yards on the pickup and a first down. Northwestern trailing by 13 points. We love you too, Jonathan Brown. We'll be home for dinner. We had a marvelous dinner, John, earlier this week at the ESPN Club at Disney World. Great facility out there. Have to get a chance to see it if you're down in the neighborhood. Here's Levine. He still has feet covering up the ball. Down to the 15-yard line. 13 more yards on that play. Collier and Sharp making the tackle on the play. Stops the clock with 4.07 to play and an injured player at the 14-yard line. This would be a terrible time to suffer an injury. Not that there's ever a good time. But let's check in with our tough guy, John Saunders, in New Orleans. I'm trying to stay that very Mark and Merrill Lynch a poll report. There's a look at Jake Plummer, Jake the Snake, one of the best for his team. Yeah, great competitor. You can see it in his eyes. Great leader. And there's Thad Busby. A little bit calmer scenario for him today as he's warming up in their pregame for tomorrow night's showdown. Florida State, as a matter of fact, right behind us, they are the number one team in the nation. They play number three, Florida, tomorrow in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And how about this guy, Archie Manning, looking down. His son's doing pretty well today, guys. John, and uh, Archie is in the house somewhere. No banner here for Archie. No. Well, you know, I remember seeing Archie play with the Saints, and that was an expansion team, and he got beat. I mean, he was one of the great quarterbacks of all time. I think the best he ever did as a quarterback was 8-8 eight and eight with the Saints. I remember watching defensive uh, backfield coach Fred Bruni on our football team when I was with the Eagles saying, look at this guy throw. Look at his release. Look at the things he does. They just didn't have us cast around him and you know there's talk that if Peyton comes out those Saints have the second pick in the NFL draft he lives in Louisiana and that might be one of the pro reasons why he would want to go pro wouldn't that be a heck of a story 315 to play in the fourth quarter Levine, the ball Levine again gaining about three yards Fitzgerald in on the tackle clock running with 302 to play in the ball game Tennessee Volunteers, barring a miracle comeback by Northwestern, 
will finish the season 10 and 2 overall. By most standards, that would be considered a very successful season. But when you're spoiled by success, like some people might be in Tennessee, then you say, huh, just another 10 and 2 season, I guess. Peyton Manning from opening snap until now. Selling the flake on the waggle. Touchdown. Moore. More, more, more. Show me the money. Touchdown, Tennessee. And that just might end any comeback hopes of Gary Barnett in Northwestern. I would think even for this football team, they've got to think this football game's over. Bootleg action again. You know, we saw it before where Manning went in for a touchdown off the same action the other way. This time he sets up his tight end. Dustin Moore, who's happy he didn't have to play any defensive end today, and even happier that he caught that touchdown pass. That's 410 yards passing, four TDs for that man right there, Peyton Mann. Incredible. Simply amazing. That ties a Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl record. Four touchdowns. Hall with the extra point. We'll be right back. Well, after those numbers posted today, there'll be a few more babies named Peyton in Tennessee. You hear they're chanting? One more year. <laughs> one more year. Not four more years. It's not a presidential election. They just want one more. The Tennessee fans are on their feet chanting that in the corner of the end zone. This is Beasley out to the 31-yard line. Manning a junior, as is Darnell Autry, the star running back. There it is. That's what he's... Hearing everybody, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I don't understand. He's saying, what? "What's that?" Okay. Oh, he got, got the message. Meanwhile, a look of uh, disappointment etched across the countenance of Darnell Autry, the thespian slash football player. Started the day with a temperature of 102 degrees. Ran the ball 17 times for a total of 66 yards, with a couple of touchdowns. Tim Hughes in a quarterback. Going back to one more year again, the chant on the sideline. You know, Manning is such a serious kid that after games are over, he takes the videotape, goes back to his room, and watches the tape of the game. Doesn't go out afterwards. I got a feeling after this game, he might just put that tape on the shelf for a couple days and enjoy himself. <laughs> And Coach Bulmer is all wet for the right reasons, though. <laughs> That's been the biggest smile we've seen from him all week. And you know, and Peyton Manning, for that matter. He, it was kind of a hectic week for him. People all around him, as you mentioned. And I don't know if he was really enjoying himself all that much, Mark. He got the sense that it was just, you know, he was almost claustrophobic with the, you know, the pressures and everything else. And now it's uh, you can nice to see the guy smile and relax a little bit. Griffin making the tackle on the play. Including this appearance in the Citrus Bowl. You know, they might want to, Tennessee might want to start to think about applying for state residency. Yeah, that's right. Get a break on their state income tax. They've been here so many times, three times in the last four years. Well, you know, it used to be the Tangerine Bowl. That's why you see East, East Texas State there and some other names. They may be a little less familiar. It's got a storied history, but now it's the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. And you're right, it could be the Comp USA Florida Citrus Tennessee Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> they come back one more time. It's been three out of four years for them. Don't forget, coming up next, Ohio State, Arizona State, number four against number two in the Rose Bowl. John Burton making that last catch, a native here of Orlando. And 125 to play in the ball game, John. I just want to say a personal thanks to you, to Dean Blevins, and to all the guys in the truck, our producer, Kim Belton, our director today, Norm Samet, and our directors of previous games, Patrick McManus and Jim Jeanette. I concur. It's been a great year college football. I really enjoyed working with everybody, especially you, Mark. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pass down the middle of the field, incomplete, intended for Burden. The coordinating producer of ABC's College Football is Bob Goodrich. Associate coordinating producer for college football is Jim Ressler. Today's game produced by Kim Belton, directed by Norm Samet. College Football Today, produced by Charles Coplin. College Football Today, directed by Calvin Haywood. College Football Today, technical director, Mike Blazo. RTD, 
That's TV Talk for Technical Director is Rich Gelber. Associate Director Fred King. Production Manager Nikki Guntan. Our Technical Manager is Joe Kerry uh, Cohn. Our Assistant's the Producer. The ever efficient Kevin Miller and Dale T. Ball. Never doubt them. Our stat man, Roger Riley. And our eagle eyed spotter is Bill Breslin. Our computer oh, stats. Yeah. Noah Scheinman and our sideline coordinator, Robert Slosby, a.k.a. Bubba. He gets the job done. Our stage manager today, Katie Webb. Thank you to all those talented people behind the camera that you rarely get a chance to see here at ABC in college football. 40 seconds to play in this, another edition of the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. A lot of points put on the board. And they're still airing it out. Musso brought down at the 45-yard line. Northwestern will finish up the season, a very successful season, at 9-3. and three. But coming up empty in the bowl again, I, don't, you know, I think they, they haven't completed their mission this season. And I think that's got to be one of the things that Barnett's got to be upset about, even though he's turned this program around and has done such a great job as the head coach at Northwestern. Let me ask you one thing real quick, John. Who do you like in the game coming up, Ohio State or Arizona State? I like Arizona State. I think even though maybe Ohio State is better from top to bottom through their 22-man starting roster, I like Arizona State simply because they have one of those seasons where they've been able to make all the plays that count at the right time in the football games. And I think their defense is underrated. They run the football a lot more effectively than most people realize. And Jake Plummer gets a lot of the attention out there, and deservedly so. But they have a pretty solid football team. If they can protect Plummer today, eh, I'm going to take them to win that game. Well, Gary Barnett says that stress makes you grow. They face some stress, and here's more stress for him. The pick, Gerald Griffin, and he wants to get a little more. Getting his little interception swerve on. Seven seconds to play in the ball game. Tennessee with another interception. Mike Davis finally making the tackle. Hey, Manning doing a little coaching on the sideline. You know, he's a guy that's so intense in the offseason, he actually works out with guys in January. We're going to take a break and come right back. Rose Bowl coming up next. Don't forget. Seven seconds to go in the game, but the tutelage of head coach Gary Barnett never stops. Yeah, he's talking to Mike Davis. He's a tight end, just a sophomore out of San Diego, California. Good prospect, 6'3", 254. Good coaches do that. They're going to coach you no matter what, because that's their job. And he's giving Mike a piece of his mind on how to play that last play. And this will be the last play of the game. 48-28 is the final. Tennessee over Northwestern. Peyton Manning, was this his last collegiate game? Well, tune in in nine months, folks. In September, you'll know if he's still back at Tennessee or not. And for head coach Bill Fulmer, it was all good. And it was all wet. For Dean Blevins and John Spagnola, I'm Mark Jones. Happy New Year. The Rose Bowl is coming up next.